yourself and please make yourself comfortable. Can we have a round of applause for our invited guest, please? <laughs> and you, my dear audience, for being a part of this potential gathering. I wish you all the best and please get whatever you can and take away home all that you need to prepare well for this exam. Once again, a very, very warm welcome. There is a very interesting, very interesting uh, quote by Mr. Gordon B. Hinckley, and I would like to quote, let us never forget to pray. God lives. He is near, He is real. He is not only aware of us, but cares for us. He is our Father. He is accessible to all who will seek Him. To start off, may I now invite Pastor Thomas to please lead us in prayer. Let us all bow our heads. Let us look to God in prayer. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, always merciful and giver of life, we praise your name and we give you thanks for the manifold blessings that you have bestowed upon to each one of us. We humbly ask to bless each one of us, all the resource person, program committee, all the guests, and all the participants. Guide us to have a better decision as we incorporate what we are going to learn throughout these activities. Once again, bless all the resource persons, who are going to share the knowledge and experience. May your peace and utmost understanding be dwell and sign upon us. Help us to concentrate and gain more knowledge as we are going to listen from the experience. Once again, we beseech your blessing and guiding from the beginning till the end. We pray that your blessing be upon to each one of us. We offer this prayer in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for leading us in prayer. To start with, me, I take the liberty to uh, highlight today's proceedings. We have a welcome note from Ms. Gabriel. The Brilla, Social and Cultural Secretary KSO Delhi and NCR. And we have presentation and gifts from KSO Delhi and NCR. Then we have speech from GS Core, where Dr. Pidus Kumar today will be speaking to us. Then we will have presentation from our special guest today. First, we will start with uh, Sir Ojit. Then, second, Sir Haryana Gunke. And third is Anne Hockey, but she is not able to be with us today because of her uh, official duty. Yesterday, she had to go to Nepal and you know conduct the Republic Day, you know commemoration stuff. So she is not able to return on time. And then we have the question and answer round. Then we have the word of thanks from Mr. Lekhinde, who is external external vice president to ASO Delhi Nancya, and closing prayer from. Evangelist Hanta. Now, may I invite Gabriela, Social and Cultural Secretary, to give uh, the, uh, the welcome speech. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Gabriela Chongwai. I'm currently pursuing my uh, PhD here in TNU. And uh, it is my great pleasure to be here in the presence of our guest speakers and invitees who have graciously accepted our invitation to come and be part of this seminar. Uh, called, aptly called Carrier in Service Services. And um, we have amongst us, I mean, uh, Dr. Uh, Brother Lagwa has already mentioned our guest speakers, but I would like to invite them uh, separately. Uh, and um, so <clears throat> uh, we're thankful that they have accommodated us in their busy schedule. Uh, and we also have one who has flown in all the way from another city. 
Sri Holendra Gaite, Agrite. Uh, he is an IRS author uh, and uh, uh, the secretary at the Jaipur uh, Development Authority, Governor of Rajasthan. I would like to request him to come up to the stage and we have our um, sisters who will be as a token of appreciation, we would just like to give and uh, right after that we would like him to take his seat at, at the stage. Yeah. We also have Sri Oji, um, he's an assistant professor at Ramjas College View and uh, also an ecologist and a columnist and we would also like him to come to the stage and accept his details. We have Dr. Piyush uh, Kumar Chaudhary, who is a faculty at the GS Co Institute. Uh, he has also earlier taught in JNU and GNU as well. It is because of their initiative, the GS Co, and in their enthusiasm that we are able to organize this seminar. Uh, we I would also like to request the representatives of uh, uh, GS Co to stand up from the seats and to accept their uh, bouquet as well. I'm going to for other things, okay? Yeah, ma'am, you can keep up with your home, okay? Thank you. Thank you. This is for man, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you have come on behalf of KWS to come and bless us with your presence. In addition, last but not the least, I would also like to welcome all of you participants without whom this conference seminar would not take place. I hope you all have a knowledgeable time and I also hope we can all take something away back with us. Thank you. Uh, Evangelist Hansa is yet to come, okay? Please keep the bouquet for you. Don't give it out to anyone. Thank you, sir, for your for accepting our gifts, humble gifts. Make yourself comfortable as I said earlier. And we will proceed with the proceedings. But before I do that, um, we'd like to hear a special, special speech from uh, Dr. Piyush Kumar Chobe. He will initiate the talk, but then uh, the two speakers will follow, okay? He is Dr. Piyush Kumar Chobe, was a student of JNU, CDC, and Times, until he completed his uh, PhD in foreign policy. And he also taught in uh, DU and Jamia University for quite a while. And he is also a senior faculty in GS Square, teaching political science optional, optional paper. So we now invite, without any further ado, Sir Dr. P.S. Pius Kumatore to please uh, give the talk. Good afternoon to all of you. So, uh, I welcome all of you on the behalf of GS Code. And definitely, I know you all are more interested in uh, uh, hearing your chief guest, so I won't take much time. Just few things on behalf of my own institution I would like to share. Uh, in general, 
for civil services, it is one of the tasks for the student, I believe, to choose a right institute. And sometimes, after wasting a lot of time and money, then they come on the right place. So, what should be the criteria for choosing an a institute? Before going into this, few things I would like to share about my own institution. In general, uh, it is important that there should be small classroom. This is a very important thing because where students can easily see who is teaching, can interact with him, can ask questions. This is what we do in our classes. In general, coaching institutes are having uh, big batches, maybe 200, 300 students. We have a strict policy of having less than 100 students in a single batch. This is a, one of the most important things we prefer because of exposure to the students with the teaching. At the same time, teachers should also interact with the students and that is why we limit our classroom. The second important thing what we do, we provide students one-to-one -one interactions with the teachers. In general, again, uh, if there are a lot of students are there and uh, teachers are having quite busy schedules, it becomes very difficult for students to go for their personal queries. But what we do generally, we uh, uh, every time all faculties have given a specific time allotment where students are allowed to come and speak, talk to teachers personally. Even few of my students are also over here they might be clearly knowing that even we share our mail IDs, we share our phone numbers, and in fact, they are, students are allowed to talk us at any point of time. Now, third important part is that, and this is the most important, once you have completed your classes, then what next? And suppose you are still uh, in the process, then what? Then definitely we have a specific policy for them also. We allow them to interact with us. Apart from that, they can participate in different programs. We provide them a lot of, uh, uh, you can say, concessions. And definitely, teachers are always available, those who are student and those who are even pass out to them. Now, third important thing I would like to say, that uh, we provide online support. There is a huge online support. We have a separate team for this. Students who are studying outside, they might not be in position to come to us, so what we do? We provide them online classes, we provide them study materials. There are a lot of students, you know, studying in different parts. And maybe they might be student at one point of time, after one or two years, they say, yes, sir, we need this material. We dispatch them. So there is a huge and good team of IT experts who are working and they're consistently providing online support to our students. And the most important thing, I would say that, for the, talent, for the talent, there is no value. Now, this is what the brief about my own institution. And the last thing I would like to say about the institution is that faculty. In general, the faculty of the GS code are studied from all premier institutions. Like myself, I have studied from JNU, did my master's to PhD, then few more teachers from IIT, few are alumni of I am also, few are uh, uh, teaching in Delhi University, as yes, there is also there. There are a lot of credible uh, teachers you can find out, and they are all are available to interact with the students. We want to have a different type of system where teachers and students can interact with each other and even can help them to identify their problems and help them out. Uh, next speaker, I will simply say a few things. In general, there is a belief how much time preparation should take, I would suggest even one year is more than enough. But the most important part is that you should be very much focused. Time frame, you can uh, set your goals, you can be focused on that and within one year, even you are in position to crack examination. But detailed discussion of the strategies will be taken by Ajit sir, so I am not going into the detail about this one. But definitely, uh, 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 I would say, that all those who are aspiring for become a civil servant, if they really put their hard work in a right direction, there is a high chance that they might qualify in their first or second attempt. That's not a, a, a big deal over there. And on the behalf of GS Code, I ensure the help we can provide to our uh, students. We are always available to for, for our students. Thank you. Thank you to all of you.
Thank you, Dr. Pinus Kumar Chodhar, for giving us the insights that we most need to uh, to keep in mind as we prepare for this exam. This will deliver the must needed stuff that we require to prepare for this exam. And we were not fortunate enough to have this sort of opportunity to, you know, enlighten us, guide us. We'll start with Sir uh, Ojit. He is an ecologist and columnist and assistant professor in Ramdas College, Delhi University. And he is also a national awardee in 2015 for popularization of science. So, without any wasting of time, may I take the liberty to invite Sir Ojit to take the stage. Good afternoon to you all. Thank you, Blackboard, for giving me this opportunity. And I also want to extend my I also extend my deep uh, warm gratitude to the student community and uh, my colleague in GS Core. The teachers are good in making notes and delivering lecture to the class, not fit for this kind of extempo speech. So <laughs> And, but why I have taken this opportunity and luckily the placement is also so good that I will be delivering something which will surely be corrected by my colleague in the frame, uh, William Lane Gaite, because he is the guy who has succeeded in this exam and I am the one who have not succeeded in this exam. <laughs> so learn the mistake from me and be corrected by his good guidance. Uh, in, before going into the geography and the what to say landscape and terrains of how to prepare, let me just share a few anecdotal story which is very commonly heard by every one of us. But let us try to harvest something which is very interesting. This is a story which I read in the Reader Digest, but very meaningful, at least to me. There used to be three teachers, and one is physics, and one is chemistry, and one is mathematics. Some of you might have already heard about this story. I just want to relate this story with the general studies scheme of work. This mathematics teachers are always crazy with heights and depths and cylinders and so on and so forth. So they were strolling by the side of a well in a university campus like JNU. And the well has not been used for quite some time. So the water has come in. So the mathematics guy thought that the height of, of the, uh, the deafness of this particular well might be so much. So he wanted to measure the deafness of the well. You know, in the mathematics, you can throw some stone and can listen to ego coming out of it, and you can find out the expected height of the well. He was trying to find out, could not. At last he decided that I should jump inside that particular well to measure the exact depthness of the well. So he requested his two friends that please wait for me, I just want to jump. So he jumped and these two guys were waiting for two hours and he was not coming and decided that he had gone. Then you already know that the physics people are always crazy with density and so on. So he said the water of the well might be so dense that he's stuck inside. So at last he also told his chemistry friend, the way for me, I also want to jump inside and measure the density of the water in the well. So he jumped inside. He did not come even after two hours. At last the chemistry teacher said with full laughter that both of my friends are soluble in water. <laughs> So, very interestingly, if we do not have a dialogue between different branches of the knowledge, it is something like this. I teach ecology, I teach geology and botany in my institution, in my college and in the general studies. I have been teaching this ecology, environment, environmental ecology, if you remember the syllabus correctly, for the last near about 10 years. If I say that ecology is the best and ecology is to force and ecology will bring you ideas, will lead as far as civil service is concerned, every subject is meaningful. In the story that I have shared, chemistry fellow might have said his two of the beautiful friends have he understood that other subjects are also equally important. So general studies is something like this. Every subject is equally important and you should be sensitive enough to that you will not be enjoying the subject or you will not be enjoying the one that you are going to do in the coming days. 
So please be sensitive and please be acknowledging the different subjects. So you might be from political science, or you might be from economics, or you might be from ecology, or you might be from a technical background. But what is very important for this examination is appreciating and sensitive to different facets, different okay, subjects. That's very, very important. That's why we are doing in the coaching institute also. The difference between the university and... I have already talked to some of the students who come in a crisis mode and said that, sir, I was a topper in the university and I was working in some of the MNC and my family member told me that I should be competing for the civil services and I am well capable, so I came here. But then I said, why are you coming right now only? As I said, so very, very interestingly, I had joined the coaching institute. Because the coaching, in coaching institute was advertising that this is this, this is that, this is so good, so I went. And to a great surprise and a merriment, when I asked, when you joined the coaching institute, did you know about the syllabus? I said, I do not know the syllabus. That is the kind of a gift that we have. So please remember, the syllabus is already available in the wave. It's available everywhere. Those who are seriously preparing for the examination, please try to have that particular mindset. You should be guided by a syllabi. Sometimes some students will say that it's out of the syllabus. There was a question which says that if you destroy a tropical rainforest, it is never converted into a grassland. So the tribals in my state, the tribals in the Amazon rainforest have been doing the sifting agriculture for time immemorial. But we still see the tropical rainforest or the rainforest coming back. It is never converted into a grassland like Ranup Kutch. If you destroy the grassland and Ranup Kutch, it will never be converted into tropical rainforest. Why? It is something that you and I have already experienced and seen. But what is important for this examination is some new tools to appreciate the changes and what is surrounding you. So this examination is not something which is very, very difficult. As I said, a university topper, a merit scholar in the 10th standard, 11 and 12, from a very good school, graduation from some of the superb institutions of the country, did a technical education in one of the grand institutions but coming back to the coaching institute, studied one year, spent a lot of time and money, and syllabus he was not aware of. This is very, very bad. So those students who are coming here, please remember, the syllabus should be your guide or so benchmark for these examinations. And UPSC will never ask anything out of the syllabus. If it is out of the syllabus, then you have all the right to claim that it is out of the syllabus. And you are not going to be introduced to the particular subject which is taught in Mars and Venus and Pluto. It is the subject which is taught here itself. So it is in our purview. It is in the boundary that you and I have traveled so many times. The only thing is that you should be appreciating the differences. You should be studying in a very inclusive manner. Otherwise, we will all be looking like, we will all be acting like the three teachers that we have just discussed. So it should not be done like that. So try to have that particular mindset to appreciate the differences, to also acknowledge and also to have a good hands by using the conceptual clarity, by using the sensitivities that you borrow out or you take it from the other branches. How do you get important? Very interestingly, today, okay, uh, let, me, let me take an opportunity to share one particular statement from one of the writings of Charles Dickens called The Tales of Two City. This particular novel begins with a statement that this is the worst of the time and this is the best of the time, and it's exactly true. This is the worst of the time. I told my students that this is the worst of the time because you are hyper-connected with the hyper-connected worlds. You have a smartphone and you think that I know everything. I have all the licenses to probe into any kind of a situation, but that is quite wrong. If you are competing for an examination like civil services, number one, syllabus. Number two, how this particular examination is conducted is very essential too. This examination is not an online examination. This is an examination where you are going to use the pen and pencils and hands and minds. So please practice it from now itself. Many a time we tend to collect so much of the information, it's only when your 8 GB or 16 GB phone is incapable of storing, then you keep on deleting. But this exercise is not going to be helpful to you. What is going to be helpful to you is have a pen and pencils and a small diary, start noting down which are important from the newspapers or any of the source. This examination, as PUSAS has already printed, is a very strategic examination. 
And this particular strategy can be easily stratified, easily understood, easily adopted, provided you do some simple techniques. And the technique is, every one of us, at least we are in Delhi and we are much advanced in terms of the knowledge, in terms of the information. The Times of India, the Hindu that you are reading at 6 o'clock in the morning is going to be read by a particular competitor way back in my state, way back in your state, in the evening around the 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. So you are always ahead half of day from the other competitors. So take that opportunity. When you are reading a newspaper, what I would suggest is try to note down. You read the 350 articles. Don't write it everything. Don't cut and paste it. This is one mistake that I committed. You read two of the articles of the same issue, then you cut it and paste it in your scrapbook, thinking that you will take a U-turn and will be reading when you are free, but the free time never comes. What is so important is read that particular article and then write five of the words from that particular article. And that particular five words will be a key words for you. And remember, if you have written yourself, Whenever you open it, you will surely recollect whatever you have read or you have understood. This is some very interesting technique that you can do it. How many of you are listening to the current affairs discussion in the FM Goal? It is extremely important. There will be a discussion on the notice issue by a journalist who has spent her lifetime in the study of the notice. And there will be a particular moderator who is again a secretary in some of the department. Listen to all those kind of things. So the government is providing all the syllabus and materials for you, but we are so insensitive. This is wrong. So early morning, you write that particular, read only one. If you read much, much more, then you will be standing in, just like me, who is standing in front of you and shouting. So if you want to become a teacher, then study, 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 study. But if you want to become an IS officer, like him, be strategic and do what is essential. And what is essential is read one national daily, the language of which you are comfortable with. Then adopt that particular okay, stuff that you are reading. And if you are reading very little, but very seriously, you will have the time to memorize. And many a time we learn by reflecting on the things that we have read. If you stop by then read and read and read and read, the time never comes to re reflect on it. Time never comes to have a memory on it, time does not come to help you in again relooking at it. So the best way is to read a very little, which is substantial, which is good stuff, and try to adopt what you are doing. That's a very interesting exercise that you should do it. And study of the journal studies or any of the optional papers will be fun if you do this particular exercise. So, so coming, so th this is the best of the time, and this is the worst of the time. I said you have all the best methods to gain the knowledge today. But at the same time, we are also experiencing the worst of the time. Why it is called the worst of the time? When you have a smartphone, when you have a Google, you will be exposed with all sorts of information for all sorts of issues. And if you are not anchoring yourself in a very, very important fundamental principles, or the conceptual knowledge is lacking, then you are going to be colored by the ideas of so many people who do not know what this particular issue is all about. So there might be a lot of blogs and blogs and blogs. There might be a lot of newspapers online and hardline, whatever it is. But if you do not know what to read and what has to be assessed, then all these particular gateways will be the wrong gateways for you. So the mobile phone, the internet, or whatever sources you are having may lend to the IS category or you will be waiting for one more year if you are not sensitive enough. So this is the best of the time and this is worst of the time. So you should use this particular base of the time with base of the capabilities. And that comes with practice, and that comes with understanding, and that comes with adoption of what you are doing. Now, another uh, uh, thing that I would again wish to share with you, taking this opportunity, is there are a lot of way caliber. There are so many people in this particular room who is much more, much more capable than what I do and what I know. But for the youngsters, okay, Take it as an advice from your brother, or take it as an advice from one of your admirers who see a lot of opportunity from the youths like you, is please be true to yourself. Okay, this, please be true to yourself, please be true to your guardians and parents. There is a very interesting essay which was written by a particular Englishman and his son was working in India at one point of time. 
His son was also competing for these examinations. And while competing for the examinations, the father is writing a letter from England that to complete this examination and to succeed in this examination, something is very important. One is called address and another one is called address, right? Another one's address. Address is not an postal address. Address means how to address the other people. For example, even though I am not in favor of a particular minister or whatever it is, but if that particular minister comes to my home to meet me, I will not be coming out with a nigger and the okay, bathroom chapel. I will be surely wearing something which will be displayed. Well, many of the students start asking, what kind of dress should I be wearing for the interview? How many ties should I be wearing? What colors of clothes should I be wearing? Absolutely okay, unnecessary. What is necessary is wear something which is which is which shows your personality. And that should be practiced from now itself. Another one is so nicely when you are confident of something, right? If you are not confident of something that you will be murmuring, you will be bubbling, and you will be making stories out of so many things without any substantial value in it. So if you are clear with what you are doing, if you started doing something very seriously and true to yourself, true to what you are doing, true to whatever guardians and parents are doing, I hope the way you speak will be clearer and more confident and will, will, will invite attraction of the others also more and more. That is something that you should cultivate from now itself. And Delhi is also such a particular environment where these things can also be easily exploited and applied every now and then. So it is up to you. And uh, I also have been uh, advised to share about uh, these things, the strategy. The strategy, as I said, please read one national newspaper. Okay. The language of which I say that should be comfortable to you. I remember when I was preparing for this examination way back in 1999 and 2000, we used to read about a particular issue in the class. Then I bought what? I bought Spectrum. Then you will be reading the same stuff in the front line. You will be reading the same stuff from Yojana. You will be reading the same stuff from Kurukshetra. You will be reading the same stuff from the headlines, the articles from Employment News. You will again be listening and you will again be looking at the YouTube to look at that particular issue. What is the use of that? Are you going to become the editor of a particular newspaper? Absolutely not. So what is important is the rich, which is important. And now, what to read and what not to read. When you are reading it, this examination is all about the issues, okay? all about the present issues. Let me just share with a student who goes to the school regularly is about the nuclear warfare, the kind of the breaking of the world because of the Soviet bloc and the US and the American bloc. Every community hall, every week you will find people talking about the nuclear stockpiling, armament, comprehensive taste ban treaty, not as such, not much important or not much important will be wrong to quote an uncle, but I will be saying that much of the issues, right, and also about the environment. We talk about the climate change. Climate change, when we talk about it, it is not only an issue of one particular nation alone. This is something that all the nations come together and going to be challenged. Another issue will come out like anything, but today if I compare Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, people talk about the Kazakhstan more it is in India. And we want to have a stronger and good relationship because of the resources in the form of oil that is found in that particular country. So what is important today is about the energy, how you are exploiting and how you are sustainably using. Another one is of the climate change, which is going to impact every one of us. And more seriously to the developing countries, more seriously to the poor nations, more seriously to the marginalized section of the society, including the children, all, and the women. And what we are going to do as far as this issue is concerned. So when you are sitting in your office, an IS officer, this is one particular issue that you will be always associated with. That is the reason why the questions today are mainly from this kind of an issue. I hope you get it. So you should be alert about what is the issue and get it from a particular national daily. And everyone should be studying one particular guidebook. Guidebook in the sense, a particular competitive okay, examinations uh, journals or a magazine. Because that will make you aware of what is happening. So the institution will time and again be also supplying you the current affairs not and also the one which would be okay giving you a competitive advantage over the others right so that is one and as far as the source is concerned 
somebody will be saying that, oh, many a time my students are asking, sir, I should be studying the, the ICSE board, or whether I should be reading this book, that book. My only submission to you is, please firmly found yourself founding on the NCRT, which is a registered book, which is a gazetted book, and every line in the NCRT has been written with a lot of thought process, with a lot of fighting. I myself have been involved in, involving in the setting of some of the syllabus and making the, uh, what is it, making the textbooks of some of the students. The level. I am right now involved in making the syllabus and also translating the uh, science textbook for the blind students. It's a very interesting program that the new government has started. So what I have seen is, for every paragraph and every line, there will be so much of the experienced people coming and shouting and talking to frame that particular okay, line. But when you are talking about the ICSE and any kind of commercial book, one author will be there, a lot of good photographs will be there, and sometimes you are mislead. Okay? So this should not be done. So if you are firmly founding on those particular parameters, I think really this particular study will be fun. Okay? And the institution time and again will again be giving more of the constructive materials basing on all those particular okay, important parameters. So this is something that we should be exploiting. So uh, keep a good health, true to yourself, understand the syllabus well, take multiple copies of the syllabus, and those students who are preparing for the examination next year, or the preparing this particular year, one copy, put it under the pillow, one particular copy of the syllabus you can paste in your washroom, one particular can be put in your purse, one can, because the syllabus will guide you what to read and what not to read. Okay? Examination is not from something which is out of the boundary. Okay? So this is, well, it is a real fun, and this is an examination not only mean for the toppers, but this is also for the metaphor like you and me, so we can always succeed in this exam is provided we follow some of the steps very regularly, very religiously, and also by keeping yourself true to what you are doing. So the word adoption is very important. When a particular a couple is not having any child, when they adopt a child, then they are so much careful about that particular child, right? So the word adoption is very important. So please adopt the syllabus, please adopt civil services, and uh, should be treated like your baby, should be treated like your, okay, your parents, should be treated like you yourself. And enjoy this reading. And in some of the other contexts, I will be more than happy to share some others, okay. But as far as this particular examination is concerned, so number one, please be sensitive, try to find the good things in others. Even though I am from the ecology, because of this particular exam, and because of the seriousness that I have taken and also during my preparation because of my alertness today, I can go and talk to any of the students and any of the friends and appreciate the kind of a good learnings that they, that they have in their chosen subject. For example, I still remember when I was running in one of the class to teach sustainable development, I talked to one of my political science teachers. He said, Ojit, what are you doing? I'm running for the class. He said, sit, sit, sit. have a cup of uh, coffee. And uh, so what are, you, what are you talking about? You are going to teach sustainable development to a particular group of students. I said, yes. And now what is sustainable development? Then I started sorting those particular lines. Like sustainable development is a development without compromising the needs and the requirements of the future generations. That teacher asked me something which is very relevant still today. He said, what is development? And I really do not know what is development. I simply mock up that particular syllabus that particular. So development, do you think that the concept of development that you and I carry, the migrants population, okay, the Manipuri migrants or the migrants from North East who are here in Delhi in this particular room, what is the concept of development to you? Did you ever ask to your forefathers, to your grandmother and father, what is the development to them? If I asked to my grandfather, he said the development is something that he is capable of owning two bolo cars and few acres of land and the rain is coming on time and the harvesting is good. That is his development. But if you ask me what is the development, I will say that the healthcare system should be good, I should have life insurance, my children should be in a good institution, and I should not be fighting with my wife, okay, and so on and so on. That is my development, right? My bank balance should be good enough, okay. Everything should not be linked with Adhar, so and so forth. But if you talk of my, so development is different. And tomorrow when you are sitting in a particular office in the IS, 
you are going to challenge the development of each and every person. And that will be done so beautifully and swiftly, provided you are sensitive to the issues that is surrounding you. And that comes with the adoption of what you are doing. And if you adopt IS, if you adopt what you are doing, I, believe me, everything is fun. I adopted my academia and I adopted writing. So my, my colleagues are asking, how do you write 1,000 words articles? That is two articles every week. But it is a fun. I never fight with somebody while writing this. It has become a part of my system. So never be bogged down by the idea that IS is something which is so voluminous. This is for those particular people, those family. Absolutely not. When the government is making the syllabus, they are making the syllabus even for incorporating a particular tribe called Jarawa in Andaman and Nicobar Island. They also come and give the examination and become a chimney. They become an IS in my state, in your state, in every state. They should also be give, given the chance to become the secretary of a particular state. So the syllabus have been designed in such a manner that every person in India will be or should be capable of attempting and should be capable of or should be enjoying this opportunity of serving the nation. So it is not very, very difficult. Provided you are being coached, provided you know the strategy and provided you adopt whatever your teacher or whatever your guide is going to say. There are so many, many things that I can share, but I don't want to extend this and, okay, uh, so much. So, uh, so any time, any place, whenever you are free enough, whenever you are willing to disturb me and others, you all are most welcome to disturb. Thank you so much. And I'm so happy that here in this particular crowd, I can see many of our sisters from our okay, uh, our reason. I'm very happy because women, okay, the young woman, the new woman, the woman of tomorrow is going to be represented by you. And we cannot develop without women of the society is developed, is developed, meaning is empowered. And the best to empower women is this kind of a job and this kind of opportunity. So please enjoy it. And all the best. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for it, for bringing to us the do's and don'ts as we uh, journey and embark on preparing for this exam. And in fact, to me, I have this particular witness that is when you mention about cutting a newspaper articles, I cannot keep it in my server, I see some good articles. And I keep pasting, and as you said, sir, it's true to my case that I cannot. And I don't want them to even go and revise. And I think uh, I should be putting into practice what I said. And to those in the crowd, just like me, if you are, I think let's pay it to what I said. Because this comes from experience. And if you do practice, I hope you'll see the results. Thank you, sir, once again. Our next speaker, to me, he needs no introduction. Um, but for the sake of the crowd, let me bring to you the man who put into practice all this and be became an IS officer in the year 2011. He is right now the Secretary of Jaipur Development Authority, Government of Rajasthan, and also an author. And if you would like to read his book, you can log into Amazon.com and also look for the book, The Confessions of the Dying Mind. It's a beautiful book and you'll love it. For me, he is an inspiration, truly. Because any doubts I have, not just about the exam, but any motivation, anything that he does, I follow closely and I draw inspiration from what he does. And in fact, he is the man that we can look up to. And I hope you all are looking forward to listening to this man because he is the right man and he is a vegetarian about what we most need by investing our time here. Without any further delay, may I have the honor to invite Sir Kamal Ramgute, I as an author, Secretary of Jaipur Government Authority, Government of Rajasthan, to take the stage.
Can I have a round of applause, please? Thank you, Malvo, for that uh, wonderful introduction. I'm a little bit, um, a little bit ashamed and a little bit embarrassed for that introduction, but I hope I live up to the expectation. And uh, I want to thank the organizers for today's uh, invitation, which was extended to me and the other speakers. JSO has done a wonderful job, I should say, because uh, this gathering for people from Northeast who are coming here to Delhi for further studies, Particularly for civil services, it must be the biggest gathering that I have been to. I have been to a number of gatherings so far, but uh, not as big as this one. And uh, so I congratulate PSO as well as GS Studies, uh, GS Core, for this wonderful initiative. And uh, we have heard such uh, wonderful messages, advices, and good guidance and suggestions from the two speakers before me. I want to speak a little bit towards on something a little bit different from the from whatever has been spoken before. Not concentrate so much on the strategy which we must adopt regarding civil services, but on the structure of the civil services, why it's important that we apply for these exams for those who are interested, and uh, what are the myths regarding the civil services examination. And any questions which we might have, I heartily welcome it. I hope that you'll be able to ask us in the Q&A session. I think uh, there's a Q&A session after this. So, yeah, all the important things that happen in any type of conference or civil services workshop happens during the Q&A session. So anyone interested, you should make your questions prepared and ask it during that time. I and the other speakers will answer to the best of our abilities. I just wanted to know by a show of hands, how many are actually preparing for civil services? Well, that's a good number, right? Good. More than 50%. Sometimes it so happens that most of the crowd are filled with people who are of old age or uncles or aunties or uh, maybe students who are far too young to prepare. But this time it seems that the crowd is really relevant and good, so we can speak and get right on to it. Well, um, as uh, the other, um, the compare of today has mentioned, I am from 2011 bats. Uh, IS, IS cadet, and uh, I've been fortunately or unfortunately posted in Rajasthan. Every time somebody sees me and I introduce myself as an IS, they tend to think that I'm either a professional, under training, or somebody who has just entered the service. I keep telling them I'm seven years old in the service now, I'm a senior IS officer. <laughs> so, um, th thanks to God for this uh, wonderful young looks. <laughs> but, uh, I've been in service for seven years and during that time there are lots of changes in the examination patterns also and lots of changes within the service, within the government, the government's system as well as the authorities of the government but there are certain things that has remained constant. There has been a lot of talk especially after 1990 when the LPG era, the liber uh, liberalization, privatization, globalization, when this era began that because of so much privatization and the globalization of our economic services that IS and the bureaucracy has become less than relevant. And therefore, because, the, because of all this, because the private sectors are coming to the country, the best minds has gone there. First, I would like to bust this myth. The idea that civil services, particularly the IS, has no longer that much relevance as before, is clearly wrong on many levels. The first is, if you look at uh, the any results that come out, Usually, the IS officers and uh, IFS and IPS, I should say, the three or the All India services, as far as the All India services are concerned, most of them are those who have already excelled in their career or in their education, in their educational background. The civil services still attract the best minds and the best talents in the country. And the reasons are obvious. There are some people, even in my batchmate, who came from foreign countries coming back to serve their country while having packages in terms of crores already. But why is it that after earning so many crores in private sector and continuing to earn, growing to high levels also, after working there for five, seven to seven years in great, you know, multinational companies, why do they come back to earn such a meager salary? The answers are very clear. 
The one thing is, what this country offers, this type of bureaucracy, the civil service setup we have in India, is very different from the civil services of many other countries. And the reason why it's so different is because the multicultural diversity, the type of establishment, the type of cultures and ethnicities that this country has is not there in most other countries, unless they are artificial countries like the United States. So the point which I'm trying to make is that this civil service structure which we are having in this country has been structured in such a way, Dr. Ojan also mentioned it, I think, that everybody can be brought along in the governance of the country. That no matter how weak the society is, uh, no matter how weak the ethnicity or the group is, that they will be part of the governance process and they will take part in the democratic process and the life of the nation. With that in mind, this civil service structure has been given the reservation policy and other things, they have been given in such a way that everybody, every community can contribute something to nation building. Now, Regarding that, especially about the civil, uh, about uh, since I'm the only representative from the civil service side, I'll focus my speech on IS and why I would like to encourage everybody, especially why it's uh, this service is a little bit different from the other services, in the sense that if you look at uh, all the other services, including IPS and IFS, they are all specialized in technical services, and this age of specialization, those are definitely important, like. Uh, since so much specialization has been encouraged now and knowledge has become more and more about less and less, therefore there is huge fragmentation of knowledge that we have here right now as well as fragmentation of the society. And this is reflected and should be reflected in the society as well. For that reason, we have IFS which deals only with external affairs or with foreign affairs of the country, with diplomacy, so to speak. And then we have police service, IPS, that deals with law enforcement. Then IRS, among the central services, which deals with revenue collection. And then we have IFOS, or forest services, which deals with environment. These are the different services that deals with specialized domain. Therefore, they are known as domain experts. But the IS as a structure is a little bit different. Even the name suggests that it's different. Because while the names of other services reflect the job that they do, if it's revenue service, then they are dealing with revenue collection. In case of the IS, it's different because the IS is supposed to bring everybody together. Therefore, it's simply administration, Indian Administrative Service. What it's called Administrative Service is that IS officers can be posted anywhere in any sector, in any department or ministry of the government at any level at any time. So while the police officer is usually confined to the Ministry of Home Affairs, or the forest officer is confined to the Ministry of Environment, or the foreign officer is confined to the Ministry of External Affairs, IS officers get posted in every department. And the reason is to borrow an example from ecology, which uh, is the subject of Dr. Oja, is that the IS is expected to look at the forest as a whole, whereas the specialized services are looking at the trees. The specialized services tend to the trees and the environment as a whole or the forest as a whole is being looked after by the Indian Administrative Service. Therefore, IS officers are called generalists. <coughs> Usually this term, generalist, has been a, a, often a, a hated word. But these days, even in the private sector also, usually those people who have a larger, expert, uh, a larger area, uh, a larger general management area, are usually the top managers in that or this or that company. The reason being that all those subjects may be different and departmentalized and all those works and activities the society might be separated into different departments, the community as a whole cannot be separated. It does not exist in silos. Like for example, if you were to construct a dam somewhere, construction of a dam is not just an engineering problem. It's also an environmental issue, therefore environmental impact assessment has to be done. It's also a social issue, therefore social impact assessment has to be done. It is also an engineering issue, of course, but then in addition, maybe there are also cultural issues involved regarding what type of tribes are living in that particular environment, or this and that. Therefore, the IS is the structure which is being built, which the Indian government, which the constitution gives to us. It's a constitutional service. It's given to us precisely so that it can look at different, different perspectives. The police officer is expected to look at things from law enforcement perspective, 
the forest officer is expected to look at things from environmental perspective and the different officers are expected to look at it from different different perspectives. The IS is expected to collect this perspective together, coordinate it, and present the most viable solution, which is the best compromise out of the best or the worst of possible worlds. So that is why, for this reason, this service is very unique, not just for India, but across the world. No other service, I should say, in the world offers the wide spectrum of experience that the IS does. Like, my first posting was as a SDM in Jaipur, so the from my friend in Jaipur. Then after that, I get posted, uh, I was in Mount Abu after that, as SDM again, but then I had additional charge of municipality, which means you get to deal with urban development. After that, I was in finance, so I deal with finance. Now I'm back in urban development, development authority, mostly dealing with housing, the same way DDA is uh, functioning right now. So, the point is that, although I get posted here and now, the, the, uh, in this or that place, we can get posted anywhere, and uh, civil IS officers are trained for that. We are not expected to know the details of everything, but we are expected to know the outlines of everything. That is why no other service offers this type of wide spectrum of experience, not just in this country, but in all the other countries also. And this is because we have a society that is so pluralistic, so various in its structure, in its character, in its composition, that only those services, or only those people who were, are able to look outside the box, think outside the box, and look at things from different, different perspectives, will be able to offer the best solutions. With that in mind, the IS is put in place. And that is why we, uh, I'm telling you again and again that you know, this service, because it's so unique, you should, even those who are not part of this structure or part of the examination process, you should apply for this job. Because the experience which you have, it's just unbelievable. Today you might be dealing with health sector, next day you might be dealing with electricity, or suddenly next time, it might be public works, dealing with roads or infrastructure or some other thing. So this type of wide experiences that you have at the management level, of course, the experts will give their expert opinion and advices and everything, and for that we need the other services. But finally, to take a call, for that you need some people who can look from different different angles. And that is what IS officers are trained to do. And that is why people who have earned so much of amount of money in different companies or in foreign countries, they come back to serve their country. Therefore, the opportunity to serve the country in so many ways, it's entirely different and it's not available everywhere else. Now, um, I would like to come a little bit towards busting some of the myths which are related with civil services. Um, we used to think that civil services, even I, while I was young, um, I think it was around 96, 97, there was this uh, one IT officer, IS officer called Vung Lung Ma. I think most of you must uh, know him, Vung Lung Ma. He's on 1992 batch. I was attending his marriage occasion, that was in 97. I was barely 10 years old, I remember that. But during those stories, we used to think that IS officers are so high and, you know, I and mighty, a little bit, have a brain or intellect a little bit separated from the rest of the, from the rest of the population. No, it's nothing like that. Okay, it's nothing like that. IS and civil service officers are simply people who have put in first hard work and second learn with smart work. It is important that we do not just study what you, uh, uh, like the, the other two speakers has mentioned. It is important to know what to study. It is also important to know what not to study. And preparing for civil services is a lot, uh, is a lot about smart work. And now, another bit, myth which goes around is IS officers are expected to read everything. That is true at a certain level in the sense that civil services questions can come from any angle, from any subject, from any place, from any part of the world. Yeah, if some event is ongoing somewhere or there is some theory developed in some place, then yes, potentially those can be questions for civil services. But usually, keep this in mind, in civil services, the questions, there are around five core subjects around which most of the questions revolve. One is history, second is geography, third is uh, polity, Fourth is uh, geography and ecology and environment uh, can be clubbed together as one. Fourth is science and technology. Fifth is current affairs. Right, and economics. Yeah, so these are the areas where most of the questions are coming. And most of these questions, apart from history, are contemporary. So your focuses should be all, all, all of these areas. 
which means that when you read the Times of India, you should not immediately turn to the tabloid page. All right, you should not turn to those pages that discusses whether you know this thing Padmavati role is that important or that uh, what's the what kind of look does what's the name of the actress again? I forgot. Yeah, Deepika Padukone aware in that particular movie. Those things are, yes, IS officers should be interested. I mean, aspirants also should be interested in everything. You should be interested in everything under the sun. But focused areas should be there. All right, the rest can be if you have the time. But during a period of preparation, usually we do not have the time to do most of other things. So I suppose that most of us here are Christians, so I'll just say this. If you're during your preparation, your study, your timetable, your routine should be simply confined for your family, for the church, and church to go on Sundays, read the Bible, pray, you know, the basic things, do it, and then go around every, you know, like weekends for preparation of, I don't know, church course and things like that, which you can do later on if you want to, or before you prepare for your civil services, but do not spend too much time on that. I don't know if that exists here, out here in Delhi, but out there in uh, uh, Chuchanku or uh, home, our hometown where we come from, there's too much church activity. So I won't encourage that much and to that extent either. There are too many others also who, who will do that on your behalf. So just confine yourself to just the basic church services, then your family, and your civil services. In case you go to college also, yeah, that, that brings up another topic again. Regarding uh, picking up your, uh, picking up your subject for civil services it is important that uh, if you are doing masters you pick up a you study for your masters the same subject that you are going to use for your optional in civil services although the patterns have changed a lot and there is a possibility that they will do away with the optionals altogether assuming that it doesn't happen and that there is still optional left so those people who have just completed your graduation and is wondering whether to apply for masters or not i would suggest first that you do it free, no. And second, if you're uh, if you're really confident and if you think that you can give your hundred percent to the exams, and that if you are confident about your own abilities, then you do it free, no. And just uh, do a distance learning. I do the same way. Or if you're a little less confident and you want to open two doors, like if I don't succeed here, then I'll succeed in the academia. That type of uh, that type of mindset, if you have it, yes, go for a full um, master studies also but take the subject which you intend to take in civil services. All right, that is important. That way you throw two birds in one stone. You don't have to prepare separately for your civil services and separately for your masters. Just out of curiosity, how many are the JNU students here? Okay, only three or four. I was a previous, uh, I don't know whether to call myself JNU uh, exactly or not, but uh, let me, take some opportunity to bash this university where I'm, I have been coming here in exactly in this hall for three, four times already. So, um, yeah, if you are prepared for civil services, do not stay in JNU. <laughs> Alright, that would be my advice. Alright, Delhi University is fine as far as it goes, but JNU has too much night, night life activity, too much, uh, too much, uh, too many things are there and it's very, what shall I say, it's too recreational and it's amazing. You have lots of friends, you hang around, you do this, you do that. And life actually begins at 12 or midnight, right? <laughs> so some people, I don't know, some of the students here might just be coming right after getting up from bed or something. I don't know. I don't know, I'm just guessing. <laughs> I have an apartment, stayed there for about six months like that. And uh, that's how I prepared for the exams and that's how I got through in my second attempt. Although during the, from my first term, I was still uh, in my college, so it doesn't count that much. So uh, the idea is that uh, while you are preparing for civil services, you should be focused, even when you are not studying. All right. To give an example, supposing you are walking around the street or something like that, and you look at the pollution, you look at the how congested the city is. So think about organization when that happens. All right. Or you walk around, you do that. Your studies will both become exciting as well as it will help in your exams. Because right from around 2006 or 7, civil service examination patterns have changed in such a way that work learning is no longer possible. Okay, there is no mugging up in civil services. It wasn't possible in my time, but if you look at the past two, three years of question paper, it's so opinionated now. I mean, the questions have become so opinion based. 
there are almost no factual questions anymore. Therefore, it is important that whatever you have taught in your uh, coaching classes or in your classrooms, those things must be able to apply to the real world. All right. If there, there is some controversy, there is always a central controversy. So, if there is a controversy here or there or something, know how to apply some theoretical and there are some issues which are involved here. So, think about it along that line so that you can use this idea of freedom of speech and expression. What are the any limitations or are there certain rational constraints to it or it's completely unfettered? So listen to the news hour in uh, this thing, different news channels. Not so much in times now or the public, but the more serious in news channels. Alright? Like any TV and other things. That doesn't mean I'm trying to you know, advertise any TV or any such thing, but it depends on your choice. The point is that you should involve yourself, you should insert yourself into whatever you're reading. Like when you're reading the editorial page of the newspaper, let's say the Hindu. What matters is how you can present your opinion. Okay? How good you can, how well you can present the point of view that you are defending. So it might be that you are in favor of a certain trade agreement or you are against it, but you must be able to account for your reasons for that. So if the editorial is saying that he is again for this uh, particular project, then try to think of the criticisms of that. If the editorial says that he is against it, then try to be for it. If you can engage yourself with the editorial at that level, then it means that you have truly understood what the article is about. And I'm very much in favor of having no newspaper clippings whatsoever. The reason is, when I was also preparing for, for civil services initially, you know, your clippings go so high, finally that it becomes taller than you. Doesn't mean I'm too tall, but it becomes too tall. But you don't even revise those things anymore, right? It's no point revising. The thing is, if the subject is important enough, if the that particular topic is important enough, newspapers will keep repeating it anyway. Alright, so today if there is something written about, uh, let's say, the tussle between the Delhi government and the central government, they'll keep writing about it anyway. Or something is happening in the judiciary, in the Supreme Court, you know, those uh, controversies that keeps happening around. They'll keep writing about those things. Whatever is important, they'll keep writing about it anyway. It's not important, that, therefore, that you put newspaper clippings. However, it's definitely important that you always regularly new, read newspapers and engage yourself. Fight with the arguments or the facts which are being presented in papers. Another thing about studies, the myth, is that, I don't know, I have never actually heard it, but there are some people who have, some IS officers even, who give this type of lectures and say that they have studied 18 hours a day or things like that doesn't happen. I really don't know how they survive, you know, spending 18 hours a day and sleeping 6 hours in between and having food and all that. Every time I think of it, even while I was preparing for civil services, I keep trying to get my mind around it. But because I never studied 18 hours a day, at the time, of course, I couldn't question them, they are the highest officers. But after I come into civil service, I can tell you that that's just bullshit. All right? That's just bullshit. There is no such thing as studying consistently for 18 hours a day. What is important rather is that you consistently study. Whether it's five hours or six hours or seven hours, it doesn't matter. But as long as you study between, let's say, four hours and eight hours a day, if you start studying for four hours right from your college life, then you don't have to study for eight hours after you graduate. But after you graduate, if your preparation starts from there, at least eight hours. And by eight hours, I mean the classes that you take for coaching as well. Which means that at a time, do not take two coaching. If you, if you go to coaching classes, classes like I did, you will spend all the time making notes and you don't even have time to revise them because you rush to the next coaching after that again. Alright, those things, that's one bad practice which you, you should not do. Finally, I stopped going to coaching altogether and I prepared on my own. The first 15 days of coaching to me are important. The last 15 days are also important. In between, whatever class notes you write, those things you can prepare on your own and it's far better when you write it down. So. 18 hours a day is a complete myth. It's a, let's just call it 18 hour myth. All right. But what is important is you should consistently study. Another thing again, another myth is that civil services, um, yeah, that 
civil services, preparation for civil service, there are certain subjects which are important. There is no such thing. All subjects are, can equally get you into the service. After you get into the service, nobody asks or nobody bothers whether you get into Sanskrit literature or Hindi literature or things like that. Alright. Whatever subject you are comfortable with, you take up that subject and you thoroughly master that subject. Whatever, if you are good in that subject, then that's fine, that's enough. That's good for you. So there is no such thing as a scoring subject or less scoring subject. Although there are certain subjects which help more than the others in the sense that they help for GS also. Like for example, geography. The reason why I took geography as my optional is that it helps in uh, pre, uh, general studies also, so I'm trying to work at a stone in one stone. But in my time, there were two optionals, so I'm a little bit outdated in that sense. See, I've gotten old, seven years. But uh, during my time, there were two optionals, so my second subject was philosophy. And I took philosophy because that was a subject I took in, uh, in, uh, in graduation, and I took it in graduation because I was interested in philosophy in the first place. I was admitted in Stevens, I stayed there, I eat, I drank philosophy, I essentially was in the library either talking the professors or discussing or arguing with them. So much so that I mastered the subject so thoroughly that when I prepared for civil services, I had to prepare only for one month. So I can concentrate on the other, other subjects during that time. So if you master a subject, take that subject. In fact, you first, for those who are in class 12, anybody in class 12? Okay. Right, so it doesn't apply to you. But for those who have already done your graduation subject and you have taken that subject, um, try to master that subject so thoroughly that in civil services you can take that subject as well. Right, all subjects are equally important as long as you're good in it. If you're bad in it, even if you take geography or public administration, it's not going to help. If you're good in it, you can take maths also and clear the exam. So these are some of the points which uh, I want to bring across today. And uh, about the service, a little bit, a bit about civil service as a career. Even before I entered the civil services, I really didn't know what IS officers did, do. We just know about the deputy commissioner, the district magistrate. Right? That's the image usually that comes to us when we talk about all the IS. And what is the police? It's the SP. So IS officers essentially, what we do are, are what shall I say, our routine hours, there is no such thing as fixed routine hours for IS officers. For the um, for the staffs, for your staffs and for your other officers, for the DLOs, it's expected that they will arrive at 9.30 or 10 o'clock, depending on the state, and go to office by 6 o'clock. IS officers can be called at any time by any person, by any minister or any of your seniors, and your office hours is only stretched between 9 o'clock till 8 or 9, uh, 9 p.m. So, for those who are really wanting to go into the service, think about it clearly. Because you really don't have much time to do other things. Although I might be the exception again in this, since I have the time to write a book. But the reason is that I've been writing consistently. Alright. The most important thing when you enter the service also, uh, assuming that some of you will be clear into it, is that consistency is most important. Whatever you do, do not try to study for 18 hours a single day, then got so tired that you sleep the next two days, <laughs> or you decided to go out and play football, or watch whatever comes along. You know, don't do that, all right? Better you study six hours consistently every single day, do not miss it at all. Regardless of what party, regardless of what chart score, regardless of what activity has to be there, all right? If you have to go for a birthday party in the afternoon or for genuine people, if you have to go and meet with your friends and you know play guitar around somewhere, those tunes you can do it, but compensate for that during the daytime. Alright. So if your friends come to burn your midnight oil, then you study during the daytime. It's as simple as that. Always compensate. Never let a day go by by which you don't study. Uh, Dr. Oja was mentioning, or, or, uh, I keep saying Oja Oji, right? Sorry. Yeah, he was mentioning that he writes uh, two articles every week. I'm very impressed by that. You know, I used to think of myself as a writer um, who can write 3,000 words a week. But uh, these days I'm also lagging behind my own advice. But somebody who can maintain consistency at that level, that's what is needed. That's what is essential. Regardless of whether 
you are actually giving out such a good output or not. Some days you might have bad moods and you, the exams couldn't just go, I mean the papers couldn't just go in. But it's important that you maintain your studies, uh, your studies consistently every single day without missing it. Final word, when you are preparing for civil services, another important thing is your writing. Writing skill is essential. All right. Because in civil services, those three hours when you sit down there, it's not just about what you know. It's about how you write down what you know. In life, it's all about competition. Right from the time when we are born, we are competing against bil bil billions and trillions of sperms, and we win. No, we win that first battle when we came out of a womb. And from that time onwards, it's all about competition. And the competition, I'm not using it in a negative sense. I'm saying it's a cooperative, competitions are also there. But the point is that in life, life is simply just unfair. All right, life is just unfair. And let us not expect that the good things will always, in fact, most of the time the good things will happen to us. We have to grab it out, reach it out, and get what we want. And for that, we need a forward. So it's important that you uh, should always uh, focus yourself on writing so that you can write what you know within those three hours. It might be, maybe you are good, uh, you know, you have uh, completed your PhD also. Or maybe you have uh, advanced so much, you have uh, studied so much and you know so much and you have content that you can write for 10 days continuous. It doesn't make a difference. Until and unless you can compress those knowledge within those three hours. Those three hours are what, that are what counts between coming and standing here and giving a speech to civil service aspirants and remaining aspirant throughout the life. Alright, so you should always focus on how to write well. Not just writing, but how to write well. One thing which I did when I was uh, given for our mains is that I always prepare, write my uh, answers in such a way that there is always five minutes remaining after I finish the paper. That is important. If you can do that consistently, it means during the exam you won't be struggling. I'll talk something about it more on this in case there are any questions coming in about writing. But uh, it is important that you should be able to finish whatever you know, whatever you want to write within those three hours. Because one question also, in our time again there were 60 marker question. Now I think the highest is 30 marks. But even 30 marks makes a lot of difference. One mark, or even in my in a batch made of mine, 0.5 marks can be the difference between getting the Indian Administrative Service and getting the Indian Police Service. All right, so marks are very crucial. Those things are very important. I missed a 60 marker question when I was giving geography paper because I was overconfident and I thought that okay, if I finish paper, this paper, I'm going to become an IS and all that. But another thing is which is important is never lose your cool. I lost my call, cool, I almost lost the service as a result, but you shouldn't do that. When you're inside the exam hall, try to be calm and never be overconfident. Never be arrogant about yourself. All right, that's important. When I was first preparing for civil services, I looked at it, I was so confident. I was overconfident. I thought the paper looked so easy, I can clear this in my first attempt. I didn't. It was a huge wake-up call. I couldn't clear it, not even the prelims. All right. So I hope you will make those mistakes which I did. Thank you so much for the patient hearing. I hope this contributes. Thank you, Sir Hanyaman uh, for your presentation. It was really enriching. And I hope every myth that you construct in your mind about the civil service will be uh, demolished today. And I want you to go back and you know energize yourself find the right strategy to start your preparation over again. For those who have been preparing for the past two, three years, I think it's apt for us to start afresh in the right direction. And that's exactly what uh, Sir Hardin has brought to us because he's been in the service and anything that you want to know about uh, IAS, you can ask him in the Q&A session also. But before we move to the q and a and i would like to acknowledge i would like to acknowledge two important people uh one is evangelist hansa uh 
Can I request the volunteer to please hand over the booking? It's a sign of our gratitude for responding to our call. And also, uh, one of the most unrecognized yet very significant role he plays, that is the cameraman. Um, what's your name? I don't know, but brother, brother, our brother, I know I'm praised indeed, but. Uh, Yes, Doc, uh, evangelist Hansa, and let's ask a few questions. Uh, without any further uh, wastage of time, we'll move to the question and answer round. So, once you ask question, please uh, be clips, okay, short clips, and to who you want to ask. Sir, Sir Rajit? Sir Almanda or Sir Dubey. Any other, please address them and ask. And I will request the, uh, the assist to give us a microphone. Do we have extra microphones? Live effect. Suppose uh, the candidate comes from a poor background. Can I ask the question, please? Uh, Sir, so the question is uh, best. I uh, you know a person to pay for civil service affect family life, especially for people who are, you know, financially, uh, so to say, unstable. I think that's a question. So who is it for? Yeah, who are you addressing to? Sir, how are you Okay. Uh, yeah, financially in, and emotionally, I'll answer. Um, Financially, the burden of preparing for civil services on the family, I don't think it's that much anymore, unless you are taking coaching. About taking coaching, if you can afford it, yes, I would encourage it. They give very good, valuable guidance. At, for the, I also say that uh, you should take, uh, when you take coaching, you should go there for the first, maximum of the first 30 days and the last 30 days. Anything in between you can do on your on your own. Once you know domain materials and you know what to study and what not to study, which they do, they teach us in the first thirty days or in the last thirty days. And uh, you can go and attend the cross courses. Those courses, which are short, those helps a lot more. And if you do those, I think the financial, um, in financially speaking, that's also a little less burdensome compared to entire coaching, um, coaching class. Um, the second thing is about buying the study materials. If in Bursary Market, you can find photocopies of it everywhere. All right. So you don't have to spend too much anymore. Plus, even more than that, you have so much online materials already, so many sites that you can visit, and even YouTube videos. This, some of these coaching centers have met their classes online. If you can follow those things consistently, which means if you can do that every day and watch and follow some of these coaching classes on YouTube, then you don't have to take classes. As long as you are somebody who can afford WhatsApp in your phone, it means you can open your YouTube, it means you can Google. So financially speaking, this social media has caused so much revolution that the financial burden on the student and the family has lessened a lot. Emotionally speaking, yes, there is a huge toll which you must, uh, you must pay. I mean, there's a lot of sacrifice which you must do. Your family must also be prepared for that, and you must also be. Because you have to be distant. I mean, you have to be so focused on your studies that you might not be able to do the normal things that your family does. And uh, if you're really serious and your family is really serious about it, then working while preparing for civil services is something that I would not encourage. Especially if you're working in the private sector, I, I would have, um, of course, every, in every case it's different. There are always exceptions, I'm not t t telling about that. But in general, it is better if you quit that private sector job and prepare for it. If you're really uh, serious about the civil services and your family has another alternative source of income. As long as that's the case, you should do that. Because the toll, especially for those who are in private sector, the toll of your work, Coming home after working, especially let's say in call centers and things like that. After working there for so long, at nights you have become nocturnal and all that. And then coming home and preparing for civil services, it's not just going to work. So emotionally also, it is 
lots of sacrifices has to be made and your family and yourself have to be, pre be prepared for that. I hope that answers. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Or the other speakers can would like yeah, to... Yeah, you can ask the other speakers also about how to write. And if you are looking for a coaching institute, ZS Code is here, a faculty member. You can ask and many more. And I believe, sir, that question came because uh, many of the students which are, whom I have come across, uh, what happened is while in the process of preparation, for example, we need to pay rent every, every month, which is, there is no exception. So financially, I see the family have this kind of pressure, you know. When the family members are not able to send the rent on time, you are a student, you know, you have to concentrate on your studies. I think family really should understand you know, the, it's not like you send your children to Delhi and then they can become an ISO. It's not like that. It requires, I mean... Uh, and yeah, also I want to advise, I just want to add to that, that if there are fellow aspirants from our own community who wants to like rent a room together, you should really do that. While I was in Rajendra Nigar, I was staying with some five, six people. And we used to discuss, you know, the topics. Like, we used to divide the topics amongst ourselves. Like today I'm going to do polity, the other person is going to do geography and we used to share it among ourselves. And that's also one methodology that works for some people. It didn't work that much for, for me, but it works for those people. Plus, living in that type of civil service environment, you know, being in that environment, that's what I say, uh, being in that environment even when you are not studying, that's important to always have that mentality that you are preparing for civil services. Like even when you were speaking, suddenly you would just go on about civil services, even when the conversation has absolutely nothing to do with it. That type of attention, that type of focus you need to have. In order to do that, you should move around your friend circle, so as, so as far as possible, be within the civil service circle. Other questions? Yeah, please. Hello, sir. My name is Asad. Actually, fortunately or unfortunately, I'm not interested in all these civil service. <laughs> but then there are some few questions or uh, there are some topics which you have mentioned in your speech, like for example, writing skills and all. So I belong to research, co I mean, uh, research field. Yeah, yeah. I did my PhD uh, from Pune University. So what, uh, s uh, something which really, uh, you know, which I feel lacking uh, uh, within me is that about the writing skill. So in related to that, what I want to ask is that how am I supposed to improve my writing skill? Yeah, you talk about that continuous writing, you know, having the happy job, uh, happy, happy job kind of writings and all. But then I think, uh, you know, first of all, there should be some other kind of logic in order to improve that writing skill, not just because of continuous writing. Like, for example, should I have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, increase or make it strong my vocabulary or something like that? There's, there must be some other things which I feel uh, continuous writing is not the only reason that I can improve my writing skills. Yeah, so definitely. You uh, you're right about it. Uh, to improve the writing skills, I was emphasizing on the most important point, consistency. But there are other factors which are in play also, which you should definitely consult. Like, I'll give my own experience. I've always been interested in writing. But in order to write properly, you, read, you should read good books also. Right. When I talk about good books, it's not just about textbooks, but it's not even about journals or articles. Those articles have a, a certain technical aspects to it, so that's a different sort of writing. I'm talking about literary works. All right. For example, classics like Plato's Republic. And I'm from philosophy background, so I'm mentioning that. If you're from history, then you read Edward Gibbon's book. You're from, if you're from physics, you read you know, a, story, a brief history of time. If you're from biology, you read Richard Dawkins' works, things like that. All right, there are very good writers in every subject who writes about every field of subject. Identify those writers, read their books, and it fulfills two purposes. One, you know about the content, and second, you also learn from their writing style. My favorite per writer personally is a philosopher historian. His name is Will Durant. And well, it was because of him that I took philosophy. He wrote a book called The Story of Philosophy. His amazing style, his writing style is amazing, it's ex ex exquisite. All right, as far as I'm concerned, it dances. You know, it's so stylish and it's so flowery. 
It's very entertain so entertaining. Even though he is writing such a dense subject like philosophy, such a boring subject, but he writes so well that it makes you interested. So what I do is I look at the writing style, I look at his writing style, I worship him as far as writing is concerned. I try to emulate his style, I try to copy it. And then after that, after some point when I'm more confident about my own, then I started developing my own style. So these are the things that you can do. It's always by engaging yourself with reading and writing, this has a symbiotic relationship. So in order to write properly, you have to read lots, especially good literature. You read those things, all right? And writing is important in whatever work you do. These days, especially if it's preparing reports, even if you are not uh, this thing, a teacher or lecturer, even then, if you're working in the private sector, you have to prepare a report one time or another. If you're working in civil services, you need to prepare your office reports, you need to prepare office files, you will need to do noting, minutes writing, and all these things. All right, so writing helps everywhere. So the important thing is one consistent writing and identifying your model, model writer, and trying to copy it, then adopting your own style. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. I, I just want to compliment uh, what my colleague has said. Indeed, if you want to improve your writing skill, then you should also have the skill and interest of appreciating the writing of others. Uh, this is what, when I was writing these two articles every week, so today I can connect myself with my biodiversity with the paintings of the Vincent van Gogh, for that matter, the drawings of the Leonardo da Vinci. For example, there is no differences between the drawings of the Okay, Ernest Hickel and that of the work written by or done by Alexander Hamburg in in the in Angus Mountain. So if you have an interest, then you can reflect. So when you're writing a particular article on what to improve the writing skills, the most important thing to encourage is the writing of the others that will reflect, that will increase your boundary and perspective. So it becomes a fun. And but sometimes when we are uh, reading a very good piece of somebody, we tend to plagiarize and copy and copy, but it doesn't work. But the only solution to prevent yourself from committing that mistake is increase your okay reading uh, areas. So uh, biology is connected with what you said, Plato, and the Plato will be connected with Darwin and Richard Dawkins, whatever it is. That connectivity comes up when your perspective increases. The horizon increases only when you appreciate the writing of others. And uh, I'm not argumenting, but one particular thing about the family is, I was talking about the time and the one is called finance. Right? So when you have a family, yes, there is a responsibility in terms of the time and the, and, and the money, which are very important resources when you're preparing. Something that I want to tell to the students and also to the students who are seriously preparing, be very true to yourself and very clearly talk to your parents. Because many of the parents, I also came to Delhi because my father thought that I have, I got a godmother from Pune and I was a merit place holder in my matriculation, so you should be an IS. That is my father thought. And when I uh, started preparing for the UPSC, I seriously started enjoying the readings while preparing rather than reading for the examination. That was one of the mistakes there. But that particular preparation has made me, uh, what to say, enjoy fun writing and enjoying that. So I never told my father that the preparation is like this, the syllabus is like this, it requires this much of the time, this much of the investment. There are something that you cannot run away. Can you clear the civil services without filling the form? As simple as that. So there are something that you must do it. So at that particular time, you should be very clear to your parents. The parents that come from the village background said, your friend has become a uh, uh, PO class. And I talked to Mr. Tom and uh, Henry, and his uh, uh, daughter has cleared that examination. It happens, but one has to be very clear to the parents. I am preparing for this examination. My limitation is this, and I will be, give me this particular time, and I will. And I hope, even if you get married and you are very true to your wife and very sensitive and 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 what to say that is very clear what you are doing, and I, I think she will or he will be supporting to you the, to, to the best of their ability. So one has to be very very clear about what you are doing what you are indulging in. And once you have adopted it, it should be an adoption by everyone. And today I think that had I got married during the preparation, I might have become an IS officer. Depends on uh, this thing. So please uh, be sensitive and rational. Emotion is very important. We are emotional animals. But sometimes rationality also very important. 
So what are the things that I have to put a brake on and what are the things that I have to gear up on? So that thing is very important. And that comes when you are very clear. And today I think that I should be talking to my father when I was preparing. That father, you are sending the money and you always say that you haven't cleared the examinations, you haven't. But I should have talked at a time that the preparation is like this and my interest is like this. And this is something. So, so that when he met his friend, whose son or daughter have cleared the examination, my father advised to me that he has done like this and you are doing like this. So it should be very clear. It should be preparation of not only you, it should be preparation of whole family. So I, I did not know. I, I think that's important. Yeah, so it's what's important. Very, very clear. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I'll uh, substantiate that totally. Um, I'll talk a little bit on my own experience on this thing. Every time I'm in, uh, I don't know if it happens with you all, but my father has always wanted to be, me to be an IS my, uh, myself. So if I ask them for, like, say, um, some pocket money for watching a movie, they would say, ask all kinds of questions, a hundred questions line up, you know, what time is it, where will it go, with whom will it go, where, how long are you going to be there, is it necessary, all these things. But if you say that you're preparing for civil services and you want to buy a book, you say, how much is it? How much does it cost? It's like that. All right. And they'll go to the extra mile. Even if they don't have money, they'll borrow it. They will borrow it, get it from somewhere. As far as long as your education is concerned, they will always find a way. Our parents. I'm saying this because people who have managed to come here to Delhi from Manipur. All right. If you have already managed to come till Delhi, it means that Logically, it means, if, I won't say this I, if I were giving this talk back at home, church, uh, church on poor or Manipur, but for those who have already managed, you know, for those who, for whom are, their parents have already managed to bring their, and send their children here, yeah, it means you already have the finances that are, so that would be sufficient for preparation of civil services. Okay. Any more? that being consistent, especially while preparing for the UPSC exam, it's not an easy task to say. Mm -hmm. So uh, other factors like uh, plays a big role like emotionally or maybe spiritually or maybe some personal things. So what according to you play the major role during your preparation? Um, one thing is, um, yeah, another thing you must cultivate among yourselves, I forgot to mention this, is that as civil service aspirants, you should be interested in everything literary, okay? Everything that can be put down in writing, so to speak. Not so much the arts, but if something can be put down in writing, you must never say, I'm not interested in this. You might not have time to read it, that's a different thing, but you should learn to be interested in everything. Even if it's such a boring thing like the gadget of India, or notifications, all right? You should be interested in reading anything. Potentially, you must be able to read everything, that's one thing. And second, it's important that, like I said, it's important you move around civil service environment. Your friends and those people should be there. Third, when I say you leave and breathe civil services, even when you don't give the exams, what I mean is that whenever you're doing anything else not related with civil services also, find a way to connect it, like you're having food. If you're having food, let's say junk food outside, then try to look at, you know, this thing, the chips, and see how much per percentage of potassium, how much percentage of iron they are, these things. If you're having food in Chinakya Puri, even with a girlfriend, let's say, and you're having good food, just think of how much raw meat will be there, it will be here, and, uh, you know, learn to divert everything back to civil services. You, you have to be in that kind of mindset. Even when not, it's impossible, like I said, to prepare civil for civil services all the time. But it's important that your mindset is always in civil services. There is this one anecdote, one story, which uh, an uncle of mine says that those people who really prepare for civil services after they give their exams, if we push them a little bit on their forehead after, right after they give the exam, they just collapse and fall down. <laughs> it's not just because of their studies, but their mentality has been structured in such a way that everything just. Everything else that sort of mentally clears off it. All right. That doesn't mean you should always study. It means your mindset should always be about civil services. 
So if for those of you who prepare for civil services and are coming here, and yet my, your mindset is thinking about how long, when is this going to end, then there is not much hope. Unless you are thinking, okay, I, this, I should leave now because I, it's my time for studies. If that's the case, yes, leave, no problem. But if it's any other reason, then you have to evaluate yourself again. Oh, uh, I'd like to further add some yet, something here. You know, when you clear your prelims examination and you fill up your mains uh, form, there is a column of hobby. And apart from that, they talk about all the details, what you have done in your schooling and colleges. You know, this extracurricular activity is a very important part of your personality. It shapes your personality. And in the interview board and, and I would say even throughout your career, it's all going to help you a lot. So civil service is not all, all about just studying. It's all about being engaged in a lot of other activities, but definitely you need to give it a priority. You need to prioritize your thing and always to be interested in all those things which can actually assist which can actually complement in your civil services preparation. So, if the anchor allows, uh, I again want to really appreciate Vilan uh, Lal because I have seen many of the students who have cleared with flying colors in this exam. That is the fun and opportunity that the teacher has and <coughs> IS officer doesn't have. That I have produced many students who have successfully cleared the examination. That's the fun of teaching. And what I differentiate from other students of mine and him is, he said that he cleared the examination in 2011 and after 8 years still he has a spirit and knows all the intricacies of it. Most of the students who have cleared first rank, second rank, third rank, I have seen continuously, including Indian Forest Service officers. While they are in the Masori, they are expert. They are willing to guide you in every and everything. But once they come to the office and being, what do you say, introduced with the green file and blue file and pink files, they lost interest. But I somehow salute you for your interest and the kind of involvement that you are in. This one. And again, uh, very interestingly, the one that you have asked, he has already preempted when he, when he said, connect what you are seeing with what you are reading. It's very important. So you might be having, <coughs> suppose example, if you have a calligraphy as a hobby, or you have a hobby of writing poems or the poetry, then why don't you do it as a part of your okay, reading so that it gives you the consistency? We are not a machine and a robot that you just fit a particular battery and until the battery is lost, you keep on doing the same thing. We are not robotic, we are not very, we are not engineered like that. So you have a jaded mind and when you so whenever you have this particular kind of a situation then you should engage in your hobby which rather instead of taking you much away from your preparation so try to bring yourself closer to the preparation so the consistency is maintained for example many of, a, a, a student of mine who got success three years ago he said so a very interesting hobby of mine is while you are reading we tend to hang around at the table and then you balance with the table right or the chair that he was sitting. He said, this is only. So when he was reading and whenever he had uh, some, he, he got bored, he do that. Right? So it's a very interesting. And <clears throat> as far as the writing skills, again, if you allow me, so I as a teacher and, uh, and, and check your answer screen, I'm very happy if you write in a very readable manner. Many students write so many things, and I know that they're writing correctly, but they are undecipherable. There's something like, okay, something like you can say, the the illustrative paintings that that you feel Egypt or some some writings in the wall, the caves of some by Manjo Daro or the Cro Magnon man. So it's very very difficult. So please write. It is not a fine art competition, but please write readably. I've checked my except I've checked many of the students' question papers, answer script, and you know it's pathetic. Even the science and technology, uh, the science and uh, that, uh, that paper is being checked by one of my friends who is a very close friend of mine. He is also an editor of one of the scientific journals of the government of India. And he said that, OJ, <coughs> next time I will never go and check the question, answer script of the UPSA. And I said, why, sir? Oh, they are writing so many things, but I cannot understand what they are writing. <laughs> and he said that, I cannot understand because I cannot read their handwriting. And this particular friend of mine told me 
in the tenth of this month, he said, I had given marks to those students, the handwriting of which I can read. So that is the reality. So many of the competitors are just taking it for granted, just taken for granted. Handwriting also plays a very important role. Handwriting doesn't mean that it should be a calligraphy, it should be some kind of a stylish font. It simply means that it should be conveying the message and it should be correct grammatically and it should be readable. It should not be like Mahatma Gandhi doing something kind of. He also curses himself. <laughs> okay. And so practice it. So, something that you should practice from now itself. Okay. As a teacher, I will tell you that if you are in a competition and if writing is involved, if hands are involved in writing, then why don't you use both hands? As simple as that. Practice with full heartedness. With uh, this and, and motivation. We human beings are very crazy with success, right? With, uh, with, with accolades and with the affirmatives. So to keep the consistency, do something very small. For example, pick up the question papers of the last five years, start solving something which you are interested in and show it to you and share it with your teachers. That small success, again, will surely help you in motivating yourself to go forward. So you should be motivating yourself. You should not punish yourself. I haven't done yesterday. Maybe because I had gone to the airport to receive my friend and the flight got delayed and you could not, because the day that which have been gone cannot come back again. But don't curse yourself, but punish yourself. Try to motivate yourself. Okay? So this is something that you should do it. So I'd like to add a couple of points to uh, what the uh, doctor is saying. Um, regarding hobbies, it's absolutely important. I think the uh, doctor also mentioned that. Um, hobbies are very important to sustain what actually it is that you want to do. And luckily for me, one of my ha hobbies happened to be writing. All right, and I'm interested in literature for its own sake, regardless of whether it's going to be useful or not, and I'm always interested in academia. For that reason, in fact, I was so interested that uh, when I was SDM of Mount Abu, at the time, I decided to continue my master's. I was in January, I didn't complete it, like I said, so I decided to give my master's. And people, people were so shocked to find that I and I as also wants to do master's even after completing this thing at such a, at such a young age. You know, press people were calling me and asking me what's the purpose of the masters and all that. Then last year only, I was there trying to do my PhD. I cleared my uh, this thing GRF. I got GRF with <laughs> UGG this thing uh, net exam. Yeah, before the last. So I wanted to complete my doctorate. I want to have that title doctor. You know, just like <laughs> the doctor yeah. So yeah, I was uh, giving the doctorate entrance exam. I cleared it from uh, National Institute of Technology. <coughs> Then, when I applied for an NOC in the government, the chief secretary was calling me and saying, what is the secretary of Jaipur Development Authority? Where, where is he going to find the time to do this and do that? And why are you giving this exam now? All this. But I won't mention which chief secretary. It has been three, three chief secretaries since that time. But, uh, uh, well, so he gave me this advice that I, as officers, can, I should read only three books. One, civil list. That's the transfer and posting list to the civil service conduct list and the constitution. All right. No other books are, impor are important. Why are you reading this? So I said, sir, everybody has, his ho uh, has their hobbies. Some of them are photography. Some of them are interested in golf. Sir, you are interested in golf. But I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in writing. I'm interested in academia. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to pursue this. It's only then after that that they understand my reasons, although they have already named me philosopher guru, guru for that reason. <laughs> but it's important that I'm very lucky that my hobbies are somehow, you know, what shall I say, aligning both what, with my job and also with, you know, future academic pursuits which I'm intending to do. That's why I wrote a book called Confessions of a Dying Mind. And uh, I used to say, this may look like self-popularization, but I used to say that any book who, any person, any reader who can understand my book thoroughly will be able to clear civil services. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the book today. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we also had a literary uh, event, uh, civil service career uh, workshop combined with it last, um, this thing on 2nd Jan when I went home in Manipur with the district administration. And there was one particular girl, she taught her college it seems. And uh, she completed my book, some 400 pages book, within a day. So
so we can give her a copy. And she's a civil service aspirant too. And there's another girl who is now um, preparing for civil services and studying some coaching, who completed in two days. And I'm certain that these two people will be here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Yeah. I just wanted to add uh, Is it because of you that Jaipur literally made it so successful? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, we have to ask them. <laughs> okay, sir, so there is a question uh, from Philip Yeah. He's asking, how to effectively read art and culture? Pardon? How to? How to effectively read art and culture? Okay, art and culture. Yeah, let me admit, although I say that you should be interested in every subject, to me the most boring subject when preparing for civil services is also art and culture. All right. <laughs> Yeah, everybody has that, but uh, we read it anyway. And my way of reading it, first the difficult thing is the language, right? Some Sanskrit words here and there, or some Tamilian words, those things that come, it really comes in the way of reading things. But um, yeah, that's where the writing style is important again. First, you do not get essays on art and culture. All right, like 30 mark questions, 15 mark questions, you don't get that in your mains. That's one good thing. And uh, for as far as prelims is concerned, one tactic which I use is that I do not try to memorize the names. I just get myself familiarized with those names or with those titles, with this and that painting, so that just <coughs> sufficiently familiar with it, so that if four options are coming, then that option, if it is included, then I will be able to detect that, OK, this is the right answer. So you can't possibly memorize everything. So just be familiar with it. So the other four options, since you can see those options, if this option comes, then something clicks in your mind, you take that. As far as the essay part is concerned, uh, uh, as uh, the main part is concerned, the writing helps. The writing is important in order to, what shall I say, bullshit your way through it. All right. Um, OK, yeah, the doctor was mentioning about the importance of you know, good cursive writing. And I would like to add on that. That's very important. Uh, I don't have a particularly good handwriting, but my, my writing is very clean. I made it so clean that there is no overwriting whatsoever in any of the papers that I wrote. Even if I wrote something, one word or something like that wrongly, I just amend the sentence a little bit and try to let the sentence come out right. You can do that only after you're comfortable enough in the writing and you know the subject matter as well. All right. Another thing is that every mark, like there are some five mark questions, there are some 10 mark questions, there are some 15 mark questions. Every five mark question, for example, I give them exactly the same space. Like if there's one five marker question here, I give them maybe let's say, for example, two paragraphs. Then, there, if there's another five marker question, I give them exactly the same two paragraphs also. It's not like, if I know one answer so properly, I decided to write two pages, and the other one has only two lines. <laughs> no, that gives a sense of a bad impression. All right, just because I know something so well that I decided to spend all my time writing that, and I didn't have time to attempt, so after the exams, you keep whining and say, there's no time to finish it. Don't do that. That's why the writing skill is important. And that's why it's important that you should practice it. Every answer that carries the same amount of marks must be devoted the same amount of space. And here you can bullshit around. Because if out of, uh, let's say, out of 20 questions you are attempting, 18 of them are really good answers, and you don't know one particular answer, let's say that's an art and culture question. So you just make it up. All right. Now your teacher, your invigilator, is checking one paper, the entire paper, and he may be, let's say, a physics teacher who has absolutely no knowledge about art and culture. So if he is giving, if the paper is on, let's say, Mona Lisa, and you decide to write the theories about Mona Lisa and invent some names in some century somewhere, there is absolutely no way that the person can check the paper when he has to check some, you know, 1,000 other papers also. He will just be wondering there is something that he doesn't know. <laughs> so you take advantage of that. But you can take advantage in, of that only in one or two questions out of, let's say, 20 questions you attempted. So what I did 
to us, there was a question about hydrogen. I have absolutely no idea about in uh, this thing, in my uh, main paper. All my answers, I write some five questions. I answer, attempt it properly. Nothing to doubt, you know, pure answers, proper answers. And suddenly, somewhere in the middle after that, I insert this question about the hydrogen. So I make up some terms and make some up some hydrogen bonds also. <laughs> and you know, that sounds really nice. All right. And some uh, theories about how hydrogen combines together with, you know, some other dioxide or something like that. So that you know, really nice. You add some technical terms to it. And then after that question, after attempting that, the next answers are again very proper. So what, will impre what impression do you give the Indian investigator? Supposing he's from art background, supposing he's taking history and he's taking hydrogen paper. Come on, there's a chance that you'll just stick away from it. So that is important. Okay. Yeah, I hope it helps. Okay, I have few, I mean, many questions flooding in. These are practical tips not to be shared outside. You are just like in the... <laughs> Okay, um, this question, so I remember has uh, answered a lot. Give him time to drink, you know, take, take a sip of water. Uh, this question uh, can be answered by Sir Ojit or Sir Dubey, Dr. Dubey. Uh, the question is, we used to be ambitious without knowing the reality of the heart struggle that lies ahead. How can or should we know that I as a civil service is not mine or ours? Is it worth sacrificing many years? Could you please repeat? Okay. Let me be slow, okay? We used to be ambitious without knowing the reality of the hard struggle that lies ahead. How can or should we know that IAS or civil service is not mine? Okay? How who should prepare for CS civil service? Is it worth sacrificing so many years? This is asked from I think a confused candidate. Uh, definitely. His name is Malhe, so anonymous. So. Uh, the important thing is uh, sometimes we make such a great barrier without understanding what really is. And to know what really is the best tool, which I believe is understanding the syllabus. And also, taking notes from the students who have already cleared or the people who are engaged in this. So, um, I still remember when I was doing my 12th and uh, we were supposed to give the medical entrance examinations. So one of the teachers came out and said, and uh, he is one of the very good teachers, very popular in my state. He said, uh, Society is not run by the doctors only. Okay, so that's very interesting, that he said. A person who have been guiding us to clear the medical interest examination is in the, on the last day saying that it is not only the doctors who serve the society. Many of the students, including me, did not give the examination and came out of money. So that is a very, very important thing. So believe me, society is run by everyone, but the society is led by the person or should be led by the person who knows his duty. So if you are a student, if you think, or if you have some iota of opinion to give the examination, then please go into the syllabus, go and read at least two years question paper and ask yourself whether I should prepare this examination or not. Another very interesting, interesting thing is contentment. I have also seen some of my students, husband and wife, both clear the civil service examinations. They were, she was already expecting and both of them died. They succumbed to suicide. That is simply because they are not getting any contentment at what they are doing. So what is important is to lead a very contented life. And I hope our ICE officers here will lead a very contented life. Because he take IS as a challenge, as a hobby, as a part of his whole schemes of writing. And he has already, what to say, it's something like a particular mother, uh, a conceived mother is taking care of the baby which is developing in her womb. So serious, so lovingly. So he loves his job and he also is motivating every now and then with the kind of the stuff that he's engaged in. So if you are thinking that IS is not mine, and I just want to ask, why do you say so? Okay. You will surely find, uh, if you become a teacher like me, then 
all of a sudden I heard a new, I had a phone call. They said I have cleared the examinations. I said, who is on the line? And so I am in the batch number this one. I sit in the corner. And absolutely, it's definitely I'm saying that it was quite unexpected that a student like him will clear that examination. <laughs> this also happened. And there are also some students who are so seriously asking, every now and then we'll be hooking you, I mean the veranda in the class will be asking, and he's not clearing the examinations. <coughs> so please don't compare with the others. You yourself is one of the grandest institution in itself. The only thing is that, read the syllabus, read the question paper, and ask yourself whether I would be able to spend the time or whether I will enjoy reading those particular stuff. If it is so, then this, is exa this examination is for you. And by and by, even though I might be shouting in the universities in the class, but the kind of little things that I do, I enjoy, but the kind of the little things and the big things that they do is amazing. If you want to represent your state, if you want to say good things of your state and say to the others, and this is a job that you should be really, okay? If you love your arts and your cultures, your, uh, your, your, your tribe, your community, this is one of the most important uh, challenges that you should do it. That is my advice. And please don't be, what to say, bogged down by the rumors. Rumors spread very fast, and we are also very much influenced by the rumors unnecessarily. So be very clear, what is your background, means what subject you have taken, pick up the syllabus, pick up the optional papers which might be overlapping with your subject that you have taken in the graduations and ask yourself whether I would be interested enough to prepare for this examination. Your interest will define whether you this examination is meant for you or not. So please remember, contentment comes when you enjoy and enjoyment comes when you take fun out of what you are doing, otherwise not. For myself, I'm lucky that I'm not an IS because I'm very much allergic to the files. <laughs> All those files. But I can read this much thick volumes of ecology, environment, and whatever it is. I'm very much not interested in legislature, but the environmental protection, the of India, then the forest, right, and everything. So enjoyable because I enjoy the core area that is associated with it. So enjoy what you are doing. If I started comparing my wife with Mona Lisa or the Lady Dinah, then fight comes. But if I think that my wife is the most beautiful lady in the world, fight never comes. Because you have to adopt. You adopt yourself. You <laughs> so adoption is very important. Cherish it and treasure every moment. Okay. My wife should be coming, but she is in the emergency department of the hospital and she didn't even get holiday on 26 January. But that is the reason why she never fights with me when I'm writing uh, my articles. And <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so everyone uh, has a problem. But, uh, so don't compare with others. You are the perfect person for this. And you are the best institution in yourself. And, and you already love Bible and read it. One particular thing that influenced me much is when I was doing my seventh standard. Seventh standard was my turning point, the, the kind of things. I went to one of the uh, cookie villages uh, on the way to Moray. My auntie was uh, serving as a teacher in one of the private schools. And the name of the school was uh, East Bumzathang Memorial High School. So I studied there. And uh, I have a lot of cookie friends uh, and I have a lot of students uh, who belong to the community that you belong to. And that was the turning point of my life. The kind of poor. The, the, the nearest market that we visit was Palel. You might be knowing about a particular. They do only on Friday. Rest of the thing, we do all kind of grouple system. We stayed in the hostel. Whenever we want to eat something, we go to the jungle nearby, collect the leaves, collect the fruits, and we eat it. We prepare vegetables. It was a learning experience. And the kind of concern, I was taking, talking to my father also. See the kind of the community, the kind of a strength, the kind of sharing. I no many of the notice students, but the cookie student organization today doing one particular thematic step. If there is a dance program, full. If there is education, nothing. But I am very mesmerized by the kind of the attendance that we have seen today. <laughs> and you have a strength. So, this is, uh, and, and what I learned in Bhumjata memory is not only the Chavangput and it's not only about, it's also about the, the, the cookie community has something that if somebody is good enough and you can promote, you have this particular love and concern for that particular person to promote. That is also something that I learned. And uh, 
Today, uh, there, there is a mock interview for the Indian Forest Service examination that I left because for the first time, the Kuti Student Organization has called. No student organization in Delhi have in, ever invited for this kind of an audience. They will invite for donations, or they will invite for <laughs> taking the signature to take a particular hold for some music concerts. I don't say that music is bad. Music is so good. But the thing is, uh, but very thematic. Still, so much of the population, so much of the, I'm, I'm, I'm really much, okay, very much humbled yes. by the kind of audience, the kind of things. So this examination is for you. You are the best institution. And you are the best guide here. And you have the best friend. So yes. please don't compare it as this. You are the best. Just a few more words here. Uh, I would say everyone is unique, you know. Its struggle is everywhere, in every field, whatever you prepare. So it is always important to understand what you are and what you can do. And it could be understood or it could be analyzed when you start doing it, you know. Success is a process. It's not something just one day you have decided and next day you become. It's just the whole process where you learn a lot, you improve yourself, lot of new traits come inside you. So, just on day one to decide whether I'm capable of doing something or not, it cannot be done basically. So you need to be into it. And then only you realize that, okay, now you started unfolding your wings and now you started realizing, okay, I have a lot of potentials and I really, I can do a lot. I just want to share one a story of my, one of my students. He come from Kashmir and he was safer there. He belongs to that community. And one day he landed in Delhi and he said, he said, I came to know uh, 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 Delhi is a good place for the uh, civil services and he visited to our institute and he asked me uh, whether I am capable of doing it or not. And the, my answer was that, okay, now you tell me, uh, what about the work what you did earlier? You are good enough or not? He said, I was very good in my work. And I say, fine, now you start doing this, you can qualify this too. Now, first he qualified its own state uh, examination. And last year he appeared for the interview. I'm really expecting him to qualify this examination. And these days, you know, a lot of advertisement are there. Dar ke aage jeet hai. So, so, <laughs> so, so, just go for the examination. Don't think. And just, you learn a lot while preparing. Okay, uh, we have many questions. Uh, I'll be selectively asking the, you know, our speakers. There are some questions which I, which I think you can even uh, watch our or Facebook Messenger and then ask. Okay, so I'll be selectively asking the question. We'll sum up the program in say 15 minutes time. Uh, so here is one question uh, from Miss Chinghoi. She says, "This is for Sir Haulyanar. Many of the experience mentioned by Walton to the question in three hours is less of intellectual and more of mugging up and putting on paper." What is your view on this, <coughs> considering the limit, time limitation? Yeah, it's uh, an important refrain that is often made that uh, examination hall is a place of a stiff, tough competition that does not really test your intellect. I believe that while this is true, factually speaking, it's not so in the larger scheme of things because in life, like I said in my speech, it's not re nothing is really fair. Every competition, just because I don't know how much of you watch uh, lawn table, sorry, lawn tennis, this Australian Open, just because Federer wins, it doesn't mean that he is the best in this thing. In every form of competition, you know, like let's say taking something like athletics, where the difference between the number one gold medalist and the silver medalist is just 0 0.007 seconds or something. It might be that, that on that day the silver medalist had a bad day, might be that he had dysentery, might be he's suffering from something else, and because of all those things, um, it might be that he underperformed. There's a saying about Usain Bolt that he rose to prominence because of what happened within one minute in that Olympic race and when you race for it. But for that one minute in which he earned more than $200 million in endorsements, he had to prepare for 20, 25 years, running eight hours a day. You know, life is like that. 
These things come in a test, and those tests may not be the perfect way. But still, it is the best system that we have among all other possible systems. It's the fairest that happens. And in civil services, especially for the STs, it so happens that you can give your exams n number of times until you reach the age of 38 or something like that. So the point is, if consistently for eight, nine exams, you couldn't clear the exam, or I mean, you couldn't clear your mains, then it means that you're not really for this type of exam. You might have other talents, but not this particular talent. So what I mean to say is that if you are good enough, if you don't clear it in the, in the first or second attempt, you might clear it in the fourth or fifth attempt. If you still don't clear after eight attempts, it means perhaps this is not your line of work. You know, this is not your line of career. So I believe those who say that you know it's a it's a mania exam is a mania. Therefore, it's not a test of intellectual capacity. Is usually said by those with lesser intellectual capacities, because most of the people. Even those who have, like, win Nobel Prizes and all that, these are people who clear tough exams. It might not be civil services, but they have already cleared their own exams in their own way. And even if you are to be a teacher or academician, let's take, for example, in India, you have to clear NET, right? And an exam is there. If you want to go foreign, you might have to clear GMAT. If you want more, you might have to clear other exams, CAT or something. Exams are the best test of intellectual capacities among the other tests which are there. So this refrain that, you know, only it's only a test of how worst or I mean it's a test of how much you can simply can write and it's not a test of your intellect. It's simply a statement that to me appears to me like saying the grips are sore. I hope that and maybe the other two speakers would like to add something to that. So, uh, I'd like to answer what exactly asked about writing questions, like out of 20 questions, most of the questions were marked up. Look, the nature of the question paper has changed a lot. Nowadays, you can find it is almost impossible to write answer just by marking the things. Because as uh, we have discussed earlier also, most of the questions are related to the application part. It is not only related to the theory part. You know, in every book you can find concepts are there, facts are there, and now the applications are there. Now the questions are more or less into applicable, uh, having applicable nature. So, mugging up of the facts is important, but how to put, where to put, that's all depend on your own articulation. And that's come only after reading and understanding the things in the entire system. So, I would suggest that. If you are writing your answer, mugging up the fact, understanding the concept are important. But applying those things on what are what are happening around us is the most important aspect of your answer writing. Once you develop this habit of interconnecting the things, putting the facts on the right place to support your arguments, then definitely you will be in a better position to write good answers. So don't depend on on just on mugging, just dependent on mugging, understanding, correlating, and then you'll be able to produce a very good answer. Okay, I have one, say two last question for uh, Sir Dubey and one for Sir Uh What the question is: Corruption is an element in a government, you know, government officer's job. How do you tackle such a you know situation like an ideal uh, diplomat or say administrator? I mean, this is out of the box question, so I thought it would be nice to listen from you. I mean, for Sir Dubey, Sir, uh, this is a question from me. Depending on the number of uh, students you know, opting for test series when it comes to prelims, uh, how is the success rate and is it really, really important that we join test series? Because the prelims is coming up in a few months' time. So, your thought on this, sir? No, definitely uh, for test series, I would like to give some insight over here. Look, test series are something which allow you, okay, this is something, which allow you to produce, reproduce what you have understood, what you have analyzed. 
So, in general, we recommend test series because of three, four important reasons. The first and the most important reason, look, whatever you have studied, you might have studied it correctly, you might have mugged it properly, but it might be possible, the best possible judgment, the best possible answer in available, uh, whatever the options are there, might be get uh, uh, might be difficult for you to get it on the uh, time of your answer. So the test series give you a kind of practice, and it's not only give you a type of practice, but it also help you to revise what you have studied it earlier. Basically, the third important thing, if there are some confusions, even while uh, going for test series, it also help you to remove those confusions. You also learn some new facts over there, and I tell you, this is with the personal experience. When you solve some questions, then your memory for those questions is a little bit longer than anything whatever you have started <coughs> in books basically. So, test series are always uh, recommended. Now, when it comes to the success, I am telling you, uh, most of the students are very enthusiastic to join the test series. But even we observe that the maximum students who are clearing the examination, those who are very much regular to the test series. It's not all about just joining the test series. It's all about that you're taking all the test and you're going through the explanation in the answer sheet what you're providing. And if still there is confusion, you continue to talk to them. And the most important contribution of the test series is basically it helps you to eliminate. You know, when you know, okay, okay this answer I know, but I, this, I don't know. It gives you that practice. You can eliminate and you can reach on the uh, correct answer. So my suggestion is that you should, if you wish, to join test series, then ensure this. You are going to attempt all test series. You are going to read carefully all the answer and explanation which has been given. Even you are going to see, like we provide even uh, uh, discussions also, going through all the discussions. Then definitely the success rate is very high for those who are appearing regularly and attempting all the questions basically. But definitely, if when it comes to the numbers, suppose 1000 number students are joined, but hardly 200 are regularly appearing for all tests, so numbers will be quite less. Only the success rate belongs to those 200 students. So my suggestion is that if you are ready, okay, I will attempt all, I'll attempt all test series, I am going to uh, 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 go, uh, participate in all discussions, I am going to analyze all the questions what I have marked, I can identify my problems. And definitely, I will mug up some extra information which has been given again in test series. 100% it is going to be very helpful for all the students. So, one last, uh, what can you offer to all the students? I mean, very committed, be coming for this, you know, talk, session. How can you offer them? Of course, ma'am, approval will be highlighting more, but then from your part, at least, how about offering a discount for test series for all the students present today? So that would be a, a huge, huge, I mean, privilege for us. Okay, uh, I, I would simply say, uh, definitely we offer a lot of discounts to students and that will be all uh, given in details by Apurva. But here I would like to add on something extra apart from this discount portion. Is, look, uh, what our institute offers apart from the regular test series programs, we also offer additional questions, you know, in our booklets we provide almost 10,000 extra questions apart from the test series side. And even as I said, teachers are always available to entertain students if they come up with a, a real uh, problem, they come up with the queries. So our institute is on one hand uh, are ready to assist to all students who are really motivated for the civil services and if financial issues are there, apart from that, academically, to certain extent in terms of providing uh, uh, providing you assistance as a, as, a, as a guide, as a mentor, we are always available. Sir, how are you? About corruption, yeah, uh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> in the civil service, we categorize four types. Okay. One, Category A includes those absolutely corrupt people. They see a file, they see money. <laughs> the a file comes and goes, and with that, money go, comes and goes. So those are that type of people. That's called category one. Category two is reasonably corrupt people. 
So reasonable and uh, corrupt people are those who do not demand money, but if they are given, they will take it. All right? So they won't demand, but if they are given, fine, fine, I do your work, no problem. Right. Third people, category three, they are not corrupt at all, they don't take it, but they don't want to do anything about corruption either. It's like leave and let live. If he takes it, his own business, why do I have to care? The fourth group of people is like Ashok Khyamka type, all right? So they are the ones who are not corrupt and also wants to change the corruption system. So, well, I don't belong to category 1A or B, but I'm not, I'm not going to say if I'm C or D. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my um, take on this whole corruption issue is uh, it's systemic, it's endemic to our society. And uh, to really change the system, ultimately, in any democracy, the responsibility lies with the people, ultimately. So, uh, this, uh, yesterday we celebrate Republic Day. A republic is a country that is ruled only with the consent of the governed. And as far as India is concerned, most of, most of our elections are free and fair. If we really want to do away with corruption, then we elect people who are not corrupted and who are willing to change the system from within. All right, civil servants in the ultimate analysis, we are just literally speaking servants. Servants of the people through the representatives. That is, that um, if the, since we are servants of the people, we and the elected people are the representatives of the people, we go as per the rules, norms, which are being set by the elected representatives. I used to tell this, uh, like uh, in JDA, in Jaipur Development Authority, we demolished lots of buildings. Just a couple of months back, we demolished an entire medical university, worth over 100 rupees quarters. Right. So, um, because of uh, this thing, um, what the laws and the norms which are there, which may or may not be reasonable. The point I'm trying to make is, whether the laws and norms are reasonable or not, they are being set by elected representatives, by the people, who, by people who are elected by the citizens. If you want to change the system, then it has to come through changing our elected representatives. All right. So, servants, the maximum that we can do is abide by the rules and norms, regardless of how much irrational or impractical those norms must be. So, we have to abide by those. And as far as that is concerned, most officers, I would say, as far as IS officers are concerned, most officers, in my opinion, are not corrupt. They belong to category C. They just don't want to fight against the system because we, most of us, are of the opinion that this is a responsibility which lies with the citizens and with the representatives of the citizens, and we are simply there to carry out the this thing, to carry out the lawful orders which are given by them. People like me, if there is an illegal order or if there is a lawful, uh, not a, a lawful order which is given to us, we do not implement it. And they know which officers do not wish to implement those things right from the beginning. I mentioned these four categories. The government has a place for each and every one of them. All right, any political party. If you want to be corrupt also, they have a place for you. If you want to be not corrupt, they have a place for you. You have to send out the right signal right from the beginning. And from the beginning, I have a reputation, you can ask anybody in Rajasthan, that I'm not a corrupt person. And for that reason, although there were lots of pressures that come in the beginning, when you keep continue working, it's been seven years, now the pressures have become so less because they know you establish your integrity, you establish your image. But if you are somebody who has established an image that you're, that you're a corrupt person, you'll have work, the government will have use for you also. That's because you elect people who, you, you, I mean citizens, we elect people who we are willing to represent in that way. You know, I used to say that in India, we do not hate corruption as such. We hate corruption when it doesn't benefit us. <laughs> Even if it benefits us, we say, well, what a nice officer he is. He's so caring and favorable. He give a job to this and that. Doesn't care how the job is given. If he, you're not qualified and don't get the job and say, my God, he's useless. <laughs> and you change it. You know, we still have that mentality. We need to get out of it. 
when it's objective and we do not have any say in a particular issue, like for example the 2G, 3G spectrum allocation case. In, tho in those cases, we can be objective and we can condemn corruption. But when it comes to our table, to our door, we are not so objective about it anymore. So I think it depends entirely on the people how we intend to deal with the corruption. And if we intend on, uh, on passing Lokpal and changing the system as such, then we have to elect those people who want to pass those type of legislations and make changes within the system. Civil servants are simply there to execute, execute the decisions taken by your representatives. As far as I'm concerned, I haven't done anything much to fight against corruption, but that's because I decided that I'm going to stick with the rules. I'm a stickler for laws, exactly the way it's laid down, but that I strongly believe this type of systemic changes can come only from people's representatives, and it should be. Because in a democracy, bureaucrats are not the boss. Thank you, thank you, sir. So we have Congress, Congress of Nevada, Flash, Nevada, Super. Yes, we have come to the end of the human rights system. And I think it was exhaustive enough. Or else if we give you time, and again, you might even ask, what should my hobby be? I think let's stop there, let's end it there, okay? If you have any more questions, which is saying you should really ask and get an answer from a bureaucrat. I think Sir Harman is always available. He can always answer you. Once you drop your questions, he's always ready to answer. He's such kind of a, a bureaucrat. I mean, uh, for people who are hungry for questions, okay, and answers. And yes, maybe next we have, uh, we have invited Nama Guru Barga to Please highlight the program offered to us by ZS Core. A round of applause for Ma'am Guru. Thank you. Greetings to the speakers and welcome everyone on behalf of GS Core. And thank you KSO for uh, such nice session and as well for the flowers. <laughs> Very beautiful flowers. Thank you. Uh, myself, Aparanta Hauser from GS Core, and I won't take much of your time. Uh, I want to explain the scheme, what we, what we are going to introduce to North students this year. Friends, see, uh, we have a planner, this study, that's going to help you with, that is all together a solution for all the myths, what option to take, how to study, how to start, and everything. Yeah. The second thing is this scholarship test. This is going to be conducted over there in Delhi and Mencia, Manipur, Assam, Meghalaya, and Nagaland. Just to appreciate the talents from Northeastern. And again, we'll be having three types of tests, actually two tests. See, we have students here who have already gone through their foundation courses, optional classes and everything. And they further they want to go for test series and different courses related to mains preparation. Friends, we'll be having a scholarship test which will give you a, rel a relaxation up to 75% in your fee. We'll be having an essay test for them. For students who want to appear for foundation course as well as for their optional classes, they can go ahead with MCQ based test. And again, I would love to appreciate everyone over here to join us and it was such a great session. What I can do from this session is that we just not we should not just prepare for this exam. That we should live this exam. Whether you clear this or you don't clear, but at least you can be a good citizen. This is a scratch card. Friends, when we start for this for the civil services preparations, we go for some basic and that is NCRT. So in this group, this is an online class for everyone, which is going to start from Monday onwards. That would be a compilation of 60 classes 
relating to the basic concepts. Microsyllabus, as uh, told us about the importance of the syllabus and the strategy and strategies by experts, topic strategies and previous year question. Please take advantage of it and if you want to register for the scholarship test, there's a link given here. Go learn and register yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ma'am Akurva. That was really enriching. Uh, people have come to your doorstep to deliver whatever you need. I think it's up to you to make use of it. And do not be confused anymore. I think enough of questions. It's us to live and you know, put everything, what we have learned in practice. I think that way we will be able to, you know, on the way and rebel more wonders about the dynamism of this exam at the same time, what strategy is apt for each individual. Uh, I wish all the very best and I will now call Mr. Dagini Donald, he is the external external affairs minister, no, 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 external vice president of KSO Delhi and India, to host the uh, World of Thanks. Hello. Uh, well, I hope you all enjoy. Uh, before going into the world of things, I will uh, also would like to have uh, a distinguished guest uh, facilitate uh, token of love and appreciation. Uh, I ask the volunteer to come and for to help out with this, I invite uh, uh, President and uh, Vice President Mr. Mahmoud. Uh, please come over to the stage. Uh, this is uh, uh, a long and a bit, uh, appreciation that the uh, ASO could do to our uh, distinguished guests. Uh, we would like to present Memento and uh, Cookie Traditions uh, Northwell. Sir Pius, uh, who represent on behalf of uh, TSCO, uh, I would like to read out this award. Uh, Cookie Student Organization Delhi and NCR presented to GS Core Coaching Institute in appreciation and acknowledgement of this contribution to the student community of Northeast India, the Institute has collaborated with Cookie Student Organization in conducting a workshop on Kerala in civil service, besides conducting a scholarship test for students from the Northeast community. Uh, Wilmington Engineering Secretary, Cookie Student Organization, uh, NCR, uh, Thangri Zoe President, Cookie Student Organization. Uh, this is we would like to give to uh, GS course. And next we have Kumar Singh, Ecologist and Com uh, Columbus, Assistant Professor at this College. As a humble guest in appreciation of your service and our gratitude to all your submission efforts of sharing and contributing to all the student community of Nordis on the occasion of workshop on scheduled in civil service. Uh, Movimental Education Secretary, the Regional President, Christian Organization. Alender, Chris and Author, Secretary, Jaipur Development Authority, Governor of Rajasthan. As humble gestures in appreciation of your service and our gratitude toward your submission effort of sharing and contributing toward the student community of Nordis on the occasion of workshop on career in civil service. Uh, Wilmington Education Secretary and Hamid Zoe, President of the Organization. Uh, secondly, uh, I want to take uh, the time to thanks in particular to GS Course uh, for collaborating, giving us such an uh, open heart and concern for the Nordic regions and Nordic uh, students who are in Delhi or in the Nordic part of the regions. Uh, uh, we thank you for the open heart and the concern so to the Nordic. Uh, and we look forward in a, in, a, in a matter of a bigger way where we can collaborate in ongoing awards. And, and the third, uh, I would like to, uh, my gratitude and, and appreciation to all the uh, distinguished respected guests 
and they are inspirations and they are the example to all the uh, IS aspirants as well as the academic aspirants. They all represent, uh, some also represent in academics and some however and the other people represent in a civil service. They are all example and they are all inspiration to all of us and we look forward in the days to come where we are inspired more to the, uh, many students in the days to come. And, and as an uh, entirety, uh, it is my, my honor to uh, uh, give to, uh, appreciation and thanks to the very host, Flagboy, uh, and the volunteers uh, for giving us such a, uh, entertainment, and it, it has such a uh, good wishes where we can collaborate, where we share, and giving us a more in-depth um, Questions and I'll reply from your guests. Thank you so much for uh, uh, the days that you have given to us. And last but not least, I would uh, like to thank you all participants, uh, amongst whom are scholars, whom are uh, civil service aspirants, whom are church leaders, and whom are employees, and who are uh, non non scholars. But you have they have spared the times for the, for your contribution. It all makes success. And then I, on behalf of the KSR, I would like to thank you all the you have come forward and made us a grand success. And last but not least, I want to make some announcement for the uh, general uh, knowledge. Uh, as far as the GS scholarship test is concerned, uh, scholarship test is registration is going on, and I would like the volunteer who are not registered so far, that you can keep registering uh, your names and to the concern exam center. Uh, exam center will be held in uh, different four uh, four Nordic regions. There's Infal, Shilong, Dimapur, and Guwahati. And the exam of date, the date of exam will be conducted on 10 February, and the date of uh, registration for the last year will be 5th of February. So uh, anyone who is willing to uh, register, you can you have more time to can register for it. And uh, to all participants in the today workshop, uh, we have arranged uh, GS code and KSO and collaboration areas, the uh, free copper, you and I hope you all get it. And uh, the participant certificate, uh, those who register, you can claim with the backstage, uh, where uh, it is a, it's a blend, but you can fill up your names, which, you, which, which in which means you can be allowed to GS code. And we have uh, two, we, will, we provide two buses, transportation in the north area. So anyone can join uh, who travel to the north area. And, and lastly, after, we, uh, after the session is over, we arrange uh, some refreshment. Please uh, get it and then uh, feel free uh, to collect and enjoy the sessions. Uh, this is the word that uh, on behalf of KSO, we would like to things and we look forward to the days to come where we can see it and build a development and growth not only for the one particular community but as a whole for the Northeast region. Thank you. Thank you, Let Israel Lion, for proposing a beautiful word of thanks. And I truly believe that the provisions that come from GS Core is truly an honor platter. It's a it's truly exhaustive. I mean, let's make use of it. And please, let's come for the test and avail all the uh, provisions provided by GS Core. Uh, before I end, I'd like to quote one beautiful quote by one of my icons, that is late APZ Abdul Kalam, our late president. He said, the letter O is present in today once. In yesterday, there is no O. And in tomorrow, tomorrow there is two O. Tomorrow, there is two O. And two step all stands for opportunity. Yesterday is gone. Do not think about what is past. Today we have one opportunity. I thank you that you have made that you know made use of that opportunity to come and gain whatever you can today by attending this workshop. And tomorrow you have two O's opportunity. Make use of it. And eventually you'll fly high. 
and the ultimate goal will be yours. And you will sail across the seas with smile and with a lot of esteem, you know, uh, respect that you ought to as an individual, as a social human being in the society. And now to close with, we'll, I would like to call Evangelist Hansa to please come and close us in prayer. Everything you said, everything you thought is important. But the most important is our God. Our God, Jesus said, in John chapter 15, verse 5, I got in you. Without you, without, he said, without you, you can't, you can't do nothing. This is what a lot of us said. You want to be addressed with four hours. You want to be righteous. But what I want to say is, we can be a little success. So we raise it and look to the ground floor. This is life. We thank you and praise you for the time for being with us throughout our service. Lord, especially we really thank you for the special gift that you have given to our teacher the who told us today, Lord. We pray that you continue to bless the organizer, especially to the our teacher who spoke us today. Lord, please continue to help help them so that they can be able to help more people in the days to come. Lord, also I pray to the people, to the students who are coming here today. Lord, help us to understand what we are hearing about today. And give us courage and strength so that we can be able to fight. We can be able to do what we could have able to do in the past. Lord, I will pray for all of us that you give us wisdom and knowledge so that we can be able to achieve our goal. Now we are going to depart from this place, Lord. We need your Holy Spirit. Be with us and guide us, strengthen us, and Protect us to release our home. Lord, we are going to have a refreshment sanctified for us, blessed for us, so whatever we, whatever we drink, be a blessing for us. Now, we come our life, our time, especially our everything into your mighty care. I pray all the same in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.